everyone, and welcome to the Culture Cast. I'm Chris Stashew, and I am joined by two people that are the only people that respond to my Twitter posts. Mr. Eric Niss. Oh. <laughs> you like that? And oh. Mrs. Jess Byard. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, to be fair, you two are like basically the only people that respond to Twitter posts that I make. <laughs> I mean, every time I tweet at Donald Trump and say, fuck off, you asshole, it's just he ignores it. I can't help it. He doesn't take time out of his busy schedule of fucking porn yes. stars and jerking off to respond to my tweets. So I know. Out of all these, like. I have 1,044 followers, and, like, maybe four of them ever say anything to me. <laughs> I uh, I did call out Devin Faraci on Twitter today, and then I promptly blocked him as soon as I did it, because I was like, I don't want to get into a war with this guy on Twitter. <laughs> it's like, I don't, I just want to <laughs> yell at you and then not have to actually talk to you. Yell into the <laughs> void and then be like, never mind, never mind, you don't get a chance to respond. That's the beauty of the internet. I don't know really who this person right. is, so he's a piece he, of shit. Yeah, he, I'm just uh, gonna take his side because you yelled at him. No, no, no. He uh, he was one of those. Uh, he was in the fallout of like the early on Me Too stuff. Where he yeah, was, he was like a huge part of it. Yeah, it was I like retract my previous statement. This guy's a piece <laughs> of shit. Um, remember when like Harry Knowles went down for like sexually assaulting women? Uh, mm-hmm. Devin Faraci yes. was like right before that. He was the one that like Alamo Drafthouse rehired and then fired him the next day when people were like, you're rehiring a sexual assaulter? And they're oh, like, no, yeah, never yeah. mind. Okay. But now yeah, he yeah. writes Now he writes a, a movie blog that is, I shit you not, that's based around Buddhism and philosophy and how it relates to movies. I <sighs> will never read it. Less fucks nope. couldn't be given right now. Nope. Oh, what an asshole. Cool. Well, you know. <laughs> To each their own, I guess. Yep, exactly. Uh, so, uh, on that note, so on this culture cast, we're going to be doing something a little different. We are going to be wrapping up the year that was 2018, talking about some of our favorite films, some of our least favorite films, some stuff that we were surprised by, some stuff that we liked, even though it was straight trip and garbage. And some stuff that was also on streaming platforms, along with uh, the biggest films that were not creatively made, a.k.a. stuff that were sequels or part of a franchise. So I I, th- I, I think we need to just uh, get right into it. Uh, let's talk about our favorite film of the year. And uh, just since you are our guest, I, am cur- I think I probably know your answer, but what was your favorite film of 2018? Oh, we're well, starting it right off, right at the biggest, the best the award. Biggest. When you want to start the other, you want to start the other direction. Okay, you're right. Probably start a better idea. Music. <laughs> yeah, best picture. All right, everybody. Five <laughs> minute award <laughs> show. Are alive with the sound of music. I, I, I'm thinking probably that was that's the, my favorite movie of yeah, just every year. So of all time. All right. All so time. anyone, you listen, it's, ant, it's anti-Nazi. It's got beautiful songs. Yeah, Julie that's Andrews. A fair point. <laughs> she was Mary Poppins. Uh, yeah, so you're right. Actually, for those of you that are edging along with us, um, let's work. Edging. <laughs> you're edging along. The edge lords. They're slowly. <laughs> Stop edging yourself. Just finish. Stop and edging then with listen the podcast. To the podcast yeah, today. right. So yeah, those of you that are both. <laughs> uh, if you're doing that, great. Uh, so uh, or at those... least don't tell us. Yeah, the right. dulcet town. Ta- the dul. <laughs> dulcet tones of our voices <laughs> the dulcet town that is this podcast um so oh. actually if you're edging along with us let's work backwards so there you go. L- let's talk about our least favorite sequel or franchise film and or franchise film of the year and jess why don't you uh, why don't you kick it off for us the worst franchise sequel film you saw in 2018 all right so i as i said before we were recording it's astonishing how few new movies I actually watch that aren't horror related. So majority of my picks are going to be horror related. So for the worst sequel franchise film of the year, probably would have been the nun had I actually bothered to watch it, but I didn't. Oh, it was Sigma. <laughs> the strangers <laughs> pray at night. <laughs> yeah. Ah. But, uh, yeah. Strangers pray at night. Um, I was super let down by it. Uh, just, I don't know. I, I really like the first strangers. I like, you know, everything about, 
it's subtlety, it's quietness, it's whatever. But this one I thought was just going to be more fun, like kind of back to slashers, which I guess it kind of is, except that it kind of rips a lot from like the early 2000s, like remakes of slashers where everybody in the movies is just awful and you just don't give a shit. Yeah. And you kind of just wish they died 20 minutes into the movie so you could just leave. <laughs> Mm. But, and I also didn't understand the fact why they tried to make it so hard, like, tried to make it seem like it was the 80s, but then put it in present day. Well, because it had to be a sequel to the first film, so it would right. <laughs> right. Well, the, convenient, the convenient sequel. But everything about it looks like it's supposed to be 80s. Oh, like I agree. she's wearing that like Ramon shirt and all that. It just it yeah. all and when the trailers would elude that it would be in the 80s too, and nobody's got like cell phones or any. Well, I guess she does kind of, but it never really comes into play. It's weird. They, yeah, they definitely like smash all the phones like right away. So yeah, the only um, good part of that movie was the pool scene. But. And honestly, that's one of the best like scenes. I saw all year. That so is the I'm just best like, part of that movie. It's yeah. the best part of that movie and like many other movies this year. So um, 2018 was pretty. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. Uh, I'm in the same boat with you that um, that movie was definitely a big letdown. But for that scene alone, it is not my least favorite sequel or franchise. film. What's your uh, least favorite? My least favorite sequel or franchise film is the brand new franchise film that we got this year called Venom. So <laughs> funny you said that. Oh, come on. That movie's not that bad. Funny you said that because in parentheses. It's my least favorite. <laughs> parentheses, I put it's probably Venom. <laughs> yeah. But I didn't see Venom, so I don't know. <laughs> no, Venom, uh, I'm not going to say it's the worst movie of 2018 because it honestly wasn't. There was a couple of movies that I saw that I liked less. Um, but as far as like a franchise film and like, let's be real, even though it's the first film in the quote unquote franchise, it's going to be a franchise that, you know, that movie made a fuck ton of money. So they're going to yeah. continue to make more. And honestly, it's, you know, the years and years that we were hyped on this movie, they said it was going to be this big, crazy, rated R, like gnarly thing. And I was like, fuck, yeah, this is going to be awesome. And then it comes out and it's like this weirdly tame, generic paint by numbers, like half love story, half comedy, like with a couple of cool action set pieces. Um like I said, not the worst movie of the year, but definitely my least favorite of like the franchise movies that I saw this year. Um, On a scale, I like, say the nun. Oh, that <laughs> that movie! I am telling you right now. Hold spoilers. it out for a spoiler. Hold out for a special place on the list, it's, eh? Yeah, it's all, I'm holding out a special place on the list for that. <laughs> Best uh, movie of 2018. That's why I didn't yeah. want to start first. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, for me, the my least wait, favorite. Wait, scene. I have one oh, question about ahead. Venom, though. Oh yes, please ask. Before we move on. Mm -hmm. on a can we understand tom hardy at all in it like oh do, yeah do you do you understand his okay good like sure his character motivation or the no, way I he mean, talks like, what he's like his, his physical speaking <laughs> like when you watch mad max and you literally can't understand a word that mad he says max, in that vein that one character he was in that like I'll, christopher I'll, nolan dunkirk movie <laughs> i'll tell you this much jess even though you can understand him, he's still doing a weird accent, and it's almost unintelligible. Is he trying to do an American accent? He's trying to do like Venom, he's trying so. to do like an Al Pacino. He does like a weird New York, like New kinda. York accent. Yeah, yeah. Uh. I couldn't tell you where it's from because I haven't spent enough time in New York to like really know. But. You know why you can't? You know why you can't tell where it's from because it's not real. Yeah, yeah exactly. I spent two weeks in New York, and I very rarely heard anybody speaking like in an accent that I would deem a new york accent now maybe i just didn't go to the right parts of new york i don't know but new york is an extremely touristy city so that's probably why but. did you hang out around a lot of people though whose names were Vinny, sal or Vito? no but i swear to god i probably <laughs> did I, I this dude i was sidebar we were sitting on the subway and this man was talking to his wife and he looked like his name was you know Vito or whatever looked like he walked right out of the sopranos and he's talking about his boss and he's saying look I don't know. I don't know. What the fuck chance do I have? He's fucking her. I, got, I can't do anything about it. I'm not going to fuck the boss. <laughs> hey, what's the matter, you? Hey, who yeah. the pasta? You fun, 
to his <laughs> wife, his tiny little just browbeaten wife who's just sitting there. And he's just like, I don't fucking do. I don't know what the fuck to do. I can't do anything. He's fucking. I don't know. I don't have any chance with the boss. Wait, is, Tom, <laughs> is Tom Hardy on this podcast with us right now? That was a pretty good New York accent. <laughs> that was better hey, than hey. one that Tom Hardy hey, did. The movie. Oh, oh. <laughs> hey, oh, cannoli. Okay. What's the matter, you? What's the matter, you? Uh, so <laughs> it's a me, a Mario. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Everything comes Mario. back to Super Mario. <laughs> that Mario. Dude I heard on the subway said Mario. Yeah, uh, I that's a, how you know he's super New York. I have a call exactly. it Mario. He calls I, it Mario. Mario. I have a friend for, who grew up in Brooklyn, and he he fucking says, "Oh yeah, I got for my Switch uh, Super Mario Brothers." I look at him and go, "What did you buy? What, what did you Jesus get?" Christ. <laughs> He's like Super what Mario Brothers. I was like, yes. "What the fuck are you talking about? Go back to your fucking <laughs> Pizza Rat City. Get out of here." Uh, pizza Rat. <laughs> speaking of talentless actors who shouldn't be working, my least favorite sequel or franchise film of the year was uh, the piece of shit we saw last month, Aquaman. Uh, it's a real, mm, real wow. turd. Real turd. Oh, you mean man, Jason it, Momoa it. doesn't do it for you? Oh, Jason Momoa shouldn't do it for anyone with his mouth open. <laughs> his mouth closed. Fine, I get it. He's he's hot. If you're into the whole like Samoan thing, sure. Um, but you know he's he's just not a good actor, and the movie is fucking bad. It's just a bad movie. Yeah, yeah. the movie was. Um, I think the only reason that uh, Venom beats out that movie for my least favorite franchise film of the year is because I actually cared about Venom, and I forgot about Aquaman about eight minutes after I walked out of the theater. So <laughs> and just think that movie was two and a half hours long. I don't remember that two and a half hours. And it's that's, like two and a half hours that I'll never get back. And that's but, the know. reality of a movie like Aquaman is that it is such a forgettable movie that it. I understand why it has made as much money as it has because it's making money in places where plot is not important. It has made $700 million overseas. And I'm not sure that overseas audiences are like really uh, putting in a lot of time and effort to be like, oh, this is a really interesting plot for the American movies they go out and see. They just want to well, see yeah, big like- special effects and whatever. I'm not not trying to make a generalization here, but the Warcraft movie made almost a billion dollars overseas too, and that movie is not great. I think they, they I think they're just marketed much more as a spectacle. They're like exactly. it's much more of like a big entertainment, sit, like a big movie. Like come out and see this. They're much more aggressive yeah. in the marketing in that way, as and opposed to all the here, nerds are going like, to be. Meh. And all, as opposed to all the nerds are going to be angry that this movie isn't a fucking, you know, faithful adaptation of a character that no one takes seriously anyways. That's true. Uh, yeah, you make a, <laughs> an argument there. Yeah. Uh, so let's move on to our favorite sequel and or franchise film of 2018. What do you got, Jess? Okay, so franchise, I'm, I'm going to go with a franchise film because sequel, nah. Um... I guess it's got to be Infinity War. <laughs> I guess. Because I guess it it's has the to only be. one I saw. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I saw uh, Black Panther. Oh, she's up. Uh, see, now I'm way in the back. You're white, so you can't pick Black Panther. You Just know what? No, I so am going to pick Black Panther. I think oh, that Black Panther it. is a better movie. <laughs> what? I enjoyed right. it more. <laughs> I enjoyed it more. Hey. I know, but the thing is, <laughs> guys, I don't watch a, I don't watch a lot of superhero movies. Like I see them occasionally. Like yeah. I don't, I don't try and stay. I just nah. I have no interest in anything DC most of the time. If it wasn't for and, this podcast, I wouldn't be watching any of these goddamn movies. Oh, get out right? of here! You would have gone and seen Infinity War. <laughs> Come on. I mean, probably, but <laughs> I'm too cool to go see Infinity War. <laughs> okay, bro. Well, <laughs> you and sure five, not Aquaman. You and the five other people who didn't go see it didn't help the billion dollar bottom line of the movie. <laughs> Okay, but no, yeah. you uh, Black Panther was your favorite of the franchise. I will pick, yeah, I will. Sequel. I will go with Black Panther. I really, of as a person who is not a huge superhero fan, I was thoroughly entertained. I was thoroughly enjoy. I, I, I didn't. I don't know. It didn't for me. The thing that always with, with superhero movies, I just, I, I know it's just a part of them. I just, I can't take the cheesiness. <laughs> 
just the cheesy dialogue, just your your comic book quips and lines. I just, it, I don't know. It just doesn't translate into like live action well for me. Yep. If it's a cartoon animated series, I can totally be on board for it. But I don't know. For some reason, there's live action superhero cheesy lines. I just, I can't deal with them. Black Panther seemed to have fewer of them. And also, I really thought that all of the supporting characters were far better than most supporting characters in any other superhero movie I've ever seen. Far more interesting, far more fun to watch. I would have actually rather had just had a movie about all of them, and Black Panther didn't have to necessarily be there. Yeah, Black all Panther people was... people lived with him. Yeah, Chadwick Boseman as Black Panther, I, I go back to our podcast we did at the beginning of the year. He was the least impressive part of that movie. I and, he, and it's not that he wasn't no, good. It everyone was else that. just outshone him a lot. Specifically, yeah. in my opinion, all the female supporting Absolutely. characters. Oh, yeah, for sure. Absolutely yeah, stole love, that movie. I would absolutely watch a movie of them yep. like that. I would definitely go see that. It should have been called Shuri featuring Black Panther. Yes, I agree. Yes. So what was your favorite, Eric? Oh, um, my favorite uh, franchise or sequel movie of the year. Um, I mean, uh, it's going to have to be Infinity War. Um, it's It seems almost like a cliched answer, but honestly... It is the movie that brought me out of uh, superhero fatigue. Um, this year, really, at the beginning of this year, I was so over all the superhero movies. I just didn't care. I was like, oh, my God, why do I give a shit about all of this? Right. Um, there's been like, you know, fucking however many movies, 16 or 18 movies or whatever at the time that had come out that I'd watched. Um you know, even coming off of the heels of uh, Thor Ragnarok, which was fun and completely different than any of the other movies, um, but still like kind of forgettable, like just like not, you know, it's just like a fun, cool superhero movie. Like it wasn't trying to be anything that it wasn't, which I really appreciated about it. But at the same time, it wasn't like, you know, mentally or emotionally like challenging at all. Right. Um, Black Panther had a lot more going on for it. Um, but at the same time, it still fell into a lot of the same superhero tropes that like every single superhero movie falls into where you have this villain who, in my mind, had the potential to be one of the best villains in all of, you know, the Marvel universe or DC universe or comic book universe ever because he had a reason. Um, and then they just kind of, they for me, they I, didn't explore yeah. it like deep enough. Um, I wanted more. I, I wanted him to last longer than one movie, you know, type of thing. It was like, we get these single serving villains in every movie. And so I think that's part of why I appreciate. Yeah, what happened to like the arch, arch nemesis of like yeah. the superhero? Well, hold, hold like, on. Where just they're there. Constant... They're just only in one fucking movie like goddamn Red Skull. It's a right. yeah. it's dumb. It's the biggest problem I have with any superhero movie is that the villains, even the ones that like you mentioned are like the arch nemesis are like, oh, it's one and done. <laughs> okay. Sure. It's right. like, you, shouldn't yeah. you be looming throughout the other movies? somewhere yeah. no and that's like, and that's kind of why i really liked infinity wars because they had this sort of like looming enemy that they had been building up towards since the first avengers movie and now we finally get to have it and the good guys lose and everything goes to shit and it's kind of like the empire strikes back of the mcu uh it really like thinking about it it hits a lot of the same beats as empire does um and uh yeah, I mean, I don't know. It was one of the few movies this year that I actually went back and saw um, like multiple times in the theater. Uh, it was a crazy spectacle. And it was honestly one of those movies that, uh, you know, it made the 10 year wait and 10 years worth of comic book movies like worth it. Mm -hmm. And I only hope that uh, Endgame, whenever it comes out um, in a couple of months, really kind of um, gives this you know sort of uh this era of the marvel cinematic universe like a good ending that you know that it deserves and that we all kind of want I but we'll see all right chris your favorite <sighs> so uh it's not anything that you guys have picked so far actually uh, oh wow. wow i am excited uh, my favorite uh franchise and or sequel film this year was a franchise sequel 
and it was Mission Impossible Fallout. Ooh, oh, that's okay. a good answer. Because like that, that movie was insane. Tom Cruise is a psycho person for yes. doing um, oh, the I Halo. Just meant in general. <laughs> well, <laughs> Scientology <laughs> notwithstanding, <laughs> praise be to Lord Zenu. Uh, the high altitude jump that he did in the film was fucking nuts. The fact that he did it is impressive. The fact that he's flying well, the helicopter in the movie just want to know what's even more nuts than him jumping out of um, him in real life. No, what's even crazier than him doing the halo jump is the cinematographer of the movie also did the halo exactly, jump. Yeah. Exactly. That's nuts. So that guy is even more insane because he did it and he doesn't even get any credit for doing it because nobody sees Oscar him doing it. <laughs> he should get honestly best cinematography because he goddamn jumped out of a fucking plane from like miles uh, above the earth well i guess we'll find out they re- release their nominations soon don't they they do and they're probably yeah, going to be month. all really fun movies that everybody saw oh, oh, i'm sure <laughs> uh Jeez. yeah no mission impossible is fun i also uh, a little bonus point in my book because it was the movie that resulted in justice league being that much more garbo so <laughs> 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 i mean that didn't factor into this but it's just kind of funny that that's the reason poor henry cavill had that (laughs) that goofy goddamn mouth at the beginning of justice league but mission impossible fallout may be one of like the perfect action movies out there it's got everything you'd want in a movie it's got an actual plot line with some intrigue some twists it carries over the plot from the previous film and it carries over previous characters and Tom, but look, you also don't need to like. Exactly. I walked into that movie like not really remembering what happened in like four and five and whatever, and I didn't feel lost. Exactly. So the movie doesn't penalize you if you haven't been following the whole time. But at the same time, if you have, there's lots of cool little Easter eggs and callbacks that it has for you. Sure. This I, is I probably agree. the only Mission Impossible movie that has ever struck my interest. <laughs> I've seen the first three. I uh, didn't see the fourth one. I haven't seen the fifth one. But you have you seen Fallout? No. Ah. There's well, you six? S- Jesus. I think, I don't know. <laughs> I think it's six. It's it, Let me put it this way. Like Eric said, it's a movie that you don't need to know anything else about, but it's also just a really fun movie that takes itself seriously, but at the same time, it doesn't, which is... Right, because it's all an action movie. Yeah. yeah. But, it look, takes the action seriously, and everything else is just kind of like in service of the action. And now, look, what about Tom Cruise? Because I hate him. Okay, so here's the thing. <laughs> here's the thing. And we're, we're kind of coming to a point now, 2019, where it's getting harder to separate the art from the artist. And that is a, a kind of a, as anyone who consumes large amounts of, of marijuana, no, large amounts of media would know that if you're large. into... Same both accounts. <laughs> <All right>. if, you, <laughs> if you like... Annie Hall, or if you like Rosemary's Baby, or... Oh, no, I don't hate Tom Cruise because he's a Scientologist. He just gets on my nerves. Oh, well... <laughs> I just don't like him just, as an actor. He just doesn't like his acting. I actually stuff. don't he's mind Tom, Tom Cruise, Cruise as an actor. in every movie to me. <laughs> but to me, that's actually okay, because Tom Cruise is a charismatic dude. Well, that's fair. But I, the, the, sure the whole guys. artist from the art from the artist thing is, look, Scientology is not great. Um, no. Like, really not great. And no, I can't be. I can't say anything about separating art from artists because I'm currently sitting in my living room with a giant Rosemary's Baby framed poster in my home. So yeah, I. <laughs> I thought you were going to say I've got this huge poster of R. Kelly on my wall, and then my response yeah, is, "I got this uh, huge R. <laughs> Captain's closet." <laughs> God, wow! It's, it's put that poster in the closet and let it be. Wait, trapped. isn't Tom Cruise in that episode of South Park with R. Uh, Kelly? Oh, and then God. he gets trapped in the closet with R. And Kelly? then so does and then John um, Travolta. John Travolta, yeah. Yep. They're all trapped in the closet. <laughs> and yep. I pull out my gun. <laughs> <laughs> um, by the way, trapped in the closet, uh, boy, that's something. R. Kelly's oh, a real piece of, he's a real I piece of shit. That. Folks. Uh, But I think in this day and age, it's becoming harder to separate the art from the artist. Tom Cruise is obviously the Scientology, like Golden Boy. Scientology is really bad, but uh, I haven't heard anything about... I mean, I have heard rumors about what Tom Cruise has done, personally. Mm, Yeah. But, I mean, short of someone coming forward and saying he's raping women, I'll still go see Tom Cruise movies for the time being. But if something comes out, no more fucking Tom Cruise movies, I'm done. <laughs> so yeah. just so we're all on the same page. 
<laughs> Which I'm assuming we were all on the same page to begin with anyways. So, uh, all right. Always. So let's, uh, do we want to do breakout actor of the year? I mean, I can't even think of anyone off the top of them. Well, I have, I have somebody. Do you do? Okay. Uh, all right. So let's get on to breakout actor of the year. Uh, and uh, we'll kick it to Jess first. Uh, who is your breakout actor or actress of the year? Uh, I picked John David Washington from Black Klansman. Oh. Uh, um, Denzel's son. Yeah. Uh, he's fantastic. I mean, that movie's fantastic. I, you know, I'm i kind of hit or miss on Spike Lee a lot of the time. But I thought the Black Klansman, Black Klansman was fantastic. And I thought that John David Washington was just... He, you know, Hollywood is built upon, like, you know, the royal families of acting, right? You know, royal families of, of media. And you can generally usually, like, see, like, the children following in the footsteps and that they, they take on a lot of, like, the same, you know, manners of the same type of acting. Like, Wyatt Russell is very much, you know, Kurt Russell. Or in or in uh, Ice Cube's son, son's case, you just straight up look like your dad. Well, yeah, there's that, too. But for me, like, I think, like, John David Washington, he is entirely just his own actor, his own thing, his own style. And I like that he can do that. I like that he can just be like, all right, yeah, this is what I'm going to do. And nobody's going to even realize that I'm Denzel Washington's son until they look it up. I didn't realize it until you said it just now. Exactly. Yeah. I also he's, didn't uh, see Black Klansman, unfortunately. It's on my list. Uh, of, it's on my list of things to watch. I know. He's great. Um, I really liked him in uh, that show Ballers that's been kind of oh, on HBO. It's yeah, it's been on HBO for a couple of years or whatever, and goddamn, that movie's cool. Um, I'm not that, not that movie. Yeah. I mean, yes, Black Klansman <laughs> is cool as shit, and that's a fucking good ass movie. But uh, Ballers is a cool show, you know. It's whatever. Um, yeah, wow, that's a good pick. All right. What about you, Eric? Um, all right, I'm gonna kind of stretch the definition of breakout, and I'm gonna go with uh, Tessa Thompson. Goddamn! Think- fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you oh, bro did I steal your yeah answer? you totally <laughs> fucking did oh, you no. totally well, yeah i mean she did. had a motherfucking monster of a goddamn year uh i mean off the heels of ragnarok from you know uh the end of 2017 then into uh god she was in fucking annihilation at the beginning of the year last year um which was insane and then uh god what else was she, she even was in fucking, fucking in? westworld uh she was in westworld which was awesome but then mm. she was also in uh she wasn't creed 2 if you saw creed 2 no it wasn't creed 2 it was sorry to bother you yes which was oh, totally I haven't seen off- that yet. oh she's awesome in it that movie's uh, fucking bananas <laughs> yeah Oh. Bananas. Uh, it might be even long bananas. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> it's it's horse bananas. <laughs> it's horse bananas. What that movie she? is horse bananas. And so uh, she's gonna be in Endgame, obviously. Yep. Yeah, she's gonna be in Endgame and stuff. Uh, and in that really I mean, bad looking two, Men in Black movie. Men in Black movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, apparently, she's in Lady and the Tramp. What's she gonna voice, Lady? Yeah. Wow. Oh, there you go. <laughs> um, yeah. Will that uh, be live action too, like Lion King? <laughs> I mean, what else can Disney do at this point, Jess? Come on now. They're right? not going to make it animated again. I would so love to see them just dress two people up as dogs <laughs> and do that. <laughs> like Wilfred style? I was about to say yes. like Wilfred. Exactly just don't like acknowledge. Wilfred. And then there's one person who just like randomly acknowledges that they're people and be like, does nobody else see the people in the dog suits? Right. No, no, we don't. People slurping spaghetti. <laughs> People are like, what? What are you talking about? Aren't those two dogs cute? Like, what? No. It's, no. Oh, what? Gee, they're <laughs> people, right? Am I yes. crazy? That is the only way I would ever watch a Lady and the Tramp movie again. That's Actually, not the original one. Yeah. <laughs> so, why? Lady and the Tramp, I could give a shit about. But uh, the fact that she was in um, two of my personal favorite movies of the year uh, in Sorry to Bother You and Annihilation. And she plays such insanely different characters um, is awesome. And uh, I can't wait to see what else she's in. She's fucking great. Yeah, I'm not too excited about that Men in Black movie because it looks uh, it actually looks really bad in a way that I wasn't expecting it. It looks really generic, which is disappointing for a franchise that I actually really like. 
But uh, I also really like Tessa Thompson, so I'm going to go see it. And I like Chris Hemsworth, so. Yeah, we'll see. As long, I mean, they both have a lot of, like, star charm, like both of them do. So as long as they are allowed within the confines of whatever the screenplay is and the director or whatever, like, as long as they're allowed to, like, do their thing that makes them so cool, then it'll be fine. Right. Um, Agree. Yeah. You know, but if they kind of try and steer them in a direction that's maybe not quite you know so cool then uh, it could be it could be real bad i agree i 100 percent agree and yeah. I'm, my pick is tessa thompson so you pretty much already covered it so uh, as they would say in the industry a uh, moot point so let's move on to the stream police uh our favorite uh non-movie streaming platform piece of media so it could be a movie or a docu-series, uh, or I guess a TV show. I mean, that's fine. I mean, at this point, it doesn't really matter because we watch TV shows like we watch movies. We just watch them all in one block. Yeah. Um, so I just- watched the first season of Miss Maisel in one day. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but that's man. That's not my favorite thing. <laughs> so uh, with that in mind, uh, clearly we're all uh, binge binge junkies. Uh, Jess, what, uh, what was your favorite streaming platform so I watched. have a favorite and I have a runner up. Okay, we'll, that's we'll, fine. We'll just we'll say my my favorite is one of them a TV show and the other one a movie because then that makes yes. it even better. Oh, okay. It All right. Is. Then we'll do both. Actually, we'll then do, you uh, just pick both. Yeah, there's no runner up if they're two different things. Yeah, All right, that's fantastic. Fine. Well, favorite uh streaming series uh was uh, Haunting of Hill House. Oh, if you yeah. have not yes. If, so Eric, you've watched it. Chris, have you? Eric, can you make that noise again so I can? <laughs> did I literally it? just do the fat bastard noise? Just <laughs> oh yeah, it did, but it's worth get it. <laughs> in my belly. I think I have to go to the bathroom and finish edging. <laughs> oh no! I don't I, think they call it finish edging. I think it's just called finishing. climax. <laughs> climax. Yeah. Uh, I have not seen it yet. Oh, oh no! Man. Oh, man. Well, okay, so and when I tell you that. what my favorite is, you're probably going to tell me I should have watched something else instead of that. So probably. Yeah, but well. <laughs> yeah, no, Haunting of Hill yeah. House. Holy crap, man. Flanagan is amazing. I am. He's definitely I, I on a couldn't, roll. I couldn't honestly give a shit about Dr. Sleep and the Shining sequel. I didn't read the book. I didn't. I don't know anything about it. But if he's directing it, I'll fucking see it fine. But Haunting of Hill House was something. I don't know, man. Like, that is a weird... It hit me in a weird place because I've never been both terrified and so incredibly sad at the same time. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, you're just, right. It's, oh, just it's that, for sure the saddest thing I saw. It is, but it's... Oh, God. It's just... It's beautiful. And, Chris, you need to watch it. I know. But, yeah, know. That, that is definitely my favorite series. My favorite movie, and... Not necessarily for this whole story, but just the kind of novelty and funness of it. But uh, the Black Mirror Bandersnatch. Uh, oh, Bandersnatch. Choose your own, ad- yeah. Choose your own adventure. Whatever the hell it was, it was it was cool. I mean, it's the nice. It's 2019, and I get to actually play a choose your own adventure movie on my TV in my home. And now, obviously, like you're not really choosing it as randomly as as you would think but it's it's still really fun did either of you do it i've only done it once i have like multiple endings i haven't gotten to yet oh i definitely um did it for several hours did Uh, you (laughs) yeah i uh, the first day it came out i was doing it for like four hours i haven't watched any black mirror at all Oh, oh my god! But that's because what I need to do that. even do with your life. Well, I you watch, watch better anthology shows like Twilight Zone and Tales from the Crypt on a weekly basis. Why would I go watch that show? So do I, but I've I know those. because it's different. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> but is it? I don't want to see a guy buck a pig, dog. Just saying. Come on, man. It's different. I know. It's, not it's the one same. of those things I just haven't gotten around to. Calm down. My you haven't god. watched Karate Kid and Home Alone. Crucify <laughs> him! I don't like Home Alone. I've never even fucking seen it. Just throwing it out there. Never even seen <laughs> it. I mean, at least you've seen it, but yes, this motherfucker's true. never even seen Home Alone. Why would I watch Home Alone if what I What do you watch... even do for Christmas? I watch Christmas Vacation, the superior Christmas movie, you, f- you fucking clown. <laughs> if you're Jewish, that's fine, but like... I know, just... Christmas Vacation is the quintessential Christmas movie. 
Chevy I Chase. Black Christmas and Gremlins. <laughs> oh, you guys don't like yeah. Christmas Vacation at sure all? I'm sure that Krampus is the quintessential oh. Christmas movie. If you're a horror fan, sure. No, it's not. It's not for me. Black Christmas and Gremlins. Black Christmas absolutely is the best Christmas horror movie. Uh, I like to go with Krampus and then Prometheus. Because oh. Prometheus <laughs> Secretly a Christmas movie. There's something wrong. What about why didn't you pick Die Hard? Because oh. I watch Die Hard whenever the goddamn yeah, hell. Yeah, right. I'm like, too. oh my god. The next person who says Die Hard is a Christmas movie to me, I'm gonna look at them and say, just because it takes place at Christmas doesn't make it a Christmas movie. And no, it's a Christmas movie. No, they play not. Christmas music like throughout that. It, movie. That's true, but I'm like, I, whenever somebody says that to me, they I feel like they act like they're telling it to me, like they're tr- like they have they're to, to be cool. make me believe them. Yeah, it's I'm like, like no, don't, I, you don't need to convince me it's a Christmas movie. I'm not gonna believe you anyways. Fine. Also, it's not a cool answer. It's a cool no. person answer to say Die Hard. Because there aren't so enough good Christmas favorite. movies to pick. They're not there, because it's Hallmark. There's is the only so person many that Christmas them. movies. Are you kidding me? That's why. No, that's what I'm saying. No, he said good ones. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is there are actually good Christmas movies you could pick and not be like, "I'm so cool, I'm gonna pick fucking Die Hard." It's like, Ugh. Mm. <sighs> fuck you. Yeah. Any well. movie that has a Christmas scene in it, I guess, is a Christmas movie by their approximation. <laughs> I like love actually. What the fuck does that mean? Um, Don't say it. I, th- <laughs> I think we might I need mean, to have a conversation with your wife. <laughs> in the right in at the right time, you know, in the right mood, I might be uh-huh. okay to watch Love Actually uh-huh. and it might not cry. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. There's someone Every else. Every once here. in a while. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Eric, what uh, what about you? Favorite uh, show and movie? And I'm okay, going to be disappointed uh, because I guarantee you the thing I pick, you're going to be like, I should have said that, but I forgot it came out in 2018. For, for show for, or for, for the, movie? For movie. Um, for show? Gosh. Uh, you already said my answer, so I'll come up with a different answer. Um, because, <laughs> no, honestly. That's, not, I how mean, this, that's uh, not how this works. That's not how any of this works. <laughs> no, no, no. I just I want to pick something that hasn't already been picked. So uh, me Haunting of Hill House. Making Tessa Thompson, it, you dickhead. <laughs> well, the haunting of hill house is honestly one of the best things like on anything that i've ever seen as far as like a story told over um several parts is concerned even better uh, than the right. last season of house of cards i'm just kidding i haven't watched the second season i gotta of go <laughs> <laughs> we all gotta go somewhere sometime. um no but that movie uh I mean, I say movie, and it's not a movie; it's a series. But and honestly, I tr- I treated it like a ten-hour movie because I watched it all in one day. Um, but yeah, there's there are parts about that that are deeply, deeply sad, and it's terrifying at parts. And it's one of the very few things. Um, I guess small spoilers ahead if you haven't seen it yet, and if you haven't, what the fuck are you even doing with your life? Uh, <laughs> it's it's no, it's it's one Jeez, of the few like give me some of that things. passive. Passive aggressive. <laughs> what are you fucking doing with your life? <laughs> it's no, it's one of the few horror things that I've seen where it has a happy ending. Yes, um, I agree that it does. And you and like I it? don't hate it. And uh, and Agreed. Chris especially knows um, mm-hmm. my you know why you taste did... for happy endings in horror movies. Uh, I'm also not a fan of happy endings in horror movies. But this show occasionally. It, it you really want puts you through the ringer. Yeah. <laughs> so by the end of it, you're like, if these people don't get a happy ending, I'm going to be sad for a week. It's going to be well, terrible. But and that's uh, the thing with Haunting of Hill House, where it's like, like I'm talking about Strangers Pray at Night, where it's the exact opposite problem, where it's just characters you hate. Like this, like you said, it's a 10 hour movie, and you really get to know. And there's a lot of characters. There's like what seven of them. Yeah. Like, yeah, there's like seven people, and you get to know every single one. You yeah, get like spend a lot of time with into all of them, both their adult versions and their child versions. Like it's just, so, I don't know. There's so many layers in that. Yeah. It also has one of the craziest jump scares. Um, oh my god! <laughs> it's very very effective, and I just about pooped my pants when I Yep. It. Um, but anyways, since we're talking about that, uh, my show, um. That I don't know uh, how you guys feel about it, but uh, I'm going to go with Maniac. Ooh, okay. I actually haven't watched it. Me either. Um, Maniac is definitely totally weird and totally on like another level of like what the fuck is going on this. Uh, it's. Uh, I think. I, I think. By the way, I'd like to point something out, and this is something you don't know. 
I used that phrase, what the fuck is going on this, on the first podcast I ever did, and I haven't uttered it since, so thank you. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, you know, that's what I'm here for, I guess. Uh, no, it's definitely, it's got a totally weird dreamlike quality to it. Um, there are definite, like, hints of, uh, you know, you, you don't know what's real, what's imaginary, what's uh, implanted, what's, you know, actually people's thoughts and things like that. And okay. uh, I think I like that. I think the acting from uh, Jonah Hill and uh, Emma Stone is fantastic for the series. Uh, and they play off of each other really, really well. And I think the direction and the uh, sort of like world building because they build these sort of worlds within worlds within worlds like in this show and it definitely is something where it's super weird and it makes you think and uh, I didn't really like it the first time I saw it but the more I think about it the more I enjoy it and so um, I started to go back and rewatch it um, a couple days ago and I'm a couple episodes in already and uh, it's fantastic uh, definitely awesome. Totally worth checking out. I would definitely. Cool. I'll have to uh, check that out. It's been sitting like, is it, since it came out, I was like, yes, I would like to watch this. And then as with everything else I put in my queue, I just let it sit there and pick something else. Right? <laughs> isn't, isn't that fun? Yeah. Like, look at all these things that I could watch. I would rather just go through these other categories now. I'd rather yeah. rewatch, rewatch Freaked for the eighth time. Oh, that's probably yep. just me though. <laughs> No, yeah, and it's uh, I, I, the whole series is uh, created or directed. Uh, I'm not sure to what extent, but it's um, by the guy who directed the first season of True Detective. So, Ooh, a, okay. you know, his directing style and everything is uh, very solid and very cool. And he, because he's the kind of guy who has the overarching, you know, sort of control and. Uh, you know, image for everything in his brain. You can tell that it really plays out all from one person's sort of imagination. It's uh, it's very awesome. Um, Carrie Fukunaga. 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 He's the guy yeah. who could have made okay. it a good movie. Instead, it was directed by a guy who thought clowns are scary and so are loud noises. <laughs> Uh, we will like see. It. We will see how scary it is, depending on how scary. Yes, it's not it over yet. Is. <laughs> well, the first part wasn't scary at all, so the second part has a lot of room to and a lot of well, ground to make that, up. Well, maybe maybe it'll be the opposite for the miniseries than for you. The first part of the movie won't be that great, and the second part of the movie will be better. Unlike the miniseries, the miniseries is great. The that is giant. Great. The second part. <laughs> the giant spider at the end. How dare you! <laughs> <laughs> didn't they have the same spider in the lord of the rings movies no it was just as good then too <laughs> probably okay. the same sewer too <laughs> all right so for movie uh i'm gonna go with there was a couple streaming movies that i really liked but i'm gonna go with a more recent one that i saw uh maybe like a month ago um and it's called puka i haven't watched that yet uh, Puka is one of the oh god, what is it called? There's like, like Into the Dark or something. Yeah, like Into that. the Dark. Hulu has this thing with Blumhouse where they're putting out a new horror movie every month that is a Blumhouse produced um, picture, and it started in October. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was the first one. I, that's the only one I've watched. The first one. Yeah, and that was a vaguely was okay. okay. Um, the November one I didn't watch, uh, but. Puka was directed by Nacho Vigalando, the guy who did oh, nice. um, Colossal and one of my all-time time favorite crimes. movies ever, Time Crimes. Um, yep. And uh, it's totally weird. And it's an insane, like, Christmas movie. And it's very, like, uh, oh, it's a totally Jacob's Ladder uh, set Ooh. at Christmas time, and uh, just like the character of Puka and the sort of like descent into insanity that happens is one of like the weirdest and like at times like really m unsettling things that I saw like this year. Uh, definitely worth watching. Check it out. All right. okay, it's going to cool. be a new Christmas movie for me going forward. And it sounds right, like it's yeah. actually a fucking Christmas movie. Well, they all, all of them are supposed to be like, yeah. you know, like holiday themed of some kind. Like the November one was Thanksgiving. And you Halloween remember that VHS and... style movie that like the short, the anthology movie? That you mean did... VHS? No, no, no. But it was the one that did like the. the oh, the, holidays. Yeah. That movie was real bad. It there was, was a couple bad. of 
good segments in there that I didn't hate. <laughs> Boy, that's not exactly a. That's There's not exactly a thumb, review. yeah, glowing review. I couldn't tell you what they are right now at this very second, but I there are segments in it. Partly didn't hate. liking them. <laughs> I remember there was a couple segments that weren't the worst, like the Labor Day segment. <laughs> Simply stunning. <laughs> All right, Chris, um, it's now your turn, sir. So, what was your favorite <laughs> show on a streaming service this year? Okay, I'm not kidding. I'm not making this shit up. I'm being 100% oh. serious when I give you this answer. Super Hold serious. on to your butts. <laughs> Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Oh. Okay. It you was, know what? I'm a. I'm gonna let you have that. It was Man, amazing, you, girl. It was amazing. It was so much fun. And I don't it watch me. I don't watch Riverdale, which I mean, like I know that it's like kind of Riverdale sideways. Um, it, I don't watch like Riverdale either. Attached to it, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, like Sabrina was like what a spinoff character from the Archie comics, right? Uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, everyone who in the show is pretty well cast. Kiernan Shipka is amazing. I haven't really watched Mad Men, so I can't speak to having seen her before. But uh, uh, the, do you forget one of the best movies of 2017, The Black Hood's Daughter? Oh yes, that's true. Yeah, Eric. Okay, um, <laughs> you hate that movie. I know. So I, do, I don't really remember that movie because I remember I had to watch it three times to make it through it without falling asleep. Um, <laughs> but oh, so, I like Black. So, Sabrina's a lot Me of fun. Too. I love it. Sabrina is a lot more fun than I was expecting it was going to be. Uh, my wife really wanted to watch it, and I wasn't like a stick in the mud. I was like, okay, sure. And I, it was actually a lot of fun. It was, uh, you know, Netflix does all good stuff when they're not canceling things. So, <laughs> for no they, reason. <laughs> yeah, they, they seem to have hitched their wagon to Sabrina a little bit. The show had a Christmas special, and it has another season. I think it's got like two more seasons uh, coming out. So it's a lot of fun if you're into kind of occult stuff I, it's kind of like i don't want to say mean girls but it's kind of like mean girls meets it's it's definitely got that mean girls vibe yeah. just with her going into that school and i mean there it's teenagers doing super not teenager things yeah <laughs> but what I, I really liked the most about it was there were parts of it that are actually scary yeah uh-huh so, exactly like the the creature design for the mm-hmm. Dark Lord or whatever is terrifying and awesome. Yeah. Uh, and it's pretty well and cast, so, too. Yeah. And so it was fun for me to watch because it is really like kind of just like a, you know, just like popcorn, you know, whatever. Like, I'm just going to hang out and watch this fun thing. Like, you know, I watch a lot of heavy shit and a lot of scary shit. And like sometimes I just want to sit back and like not have to like yep. be on the verge of pooping or crying. Well, or, it's nice you know, to whatever. watch. Like, it's nice to watch something that is scary, like a horror theme, but isn't like beating you over the head with it. Right. Yeah. It's like it's it's a it's really like, good like intro. Yeah. Not the movie Halloween, the holiday Halloween. Yeah. It is the yeah, perfect yeah. like encapsulation of that like feeling of Halloween, that feeling of fall, spooky, whatever. It's it is fun and I totally hardcore ship Zelda and Faustus. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> and it also gets a a honorable mention for Netflix being the biggest bunch of fucking trolls. If you go to details about the show, they say like who's in it, the genre, and then it says like this show is, and it kind of gives like a couple like adjectives about the show. The first adjective is chilling. No shit, assholes. <laughs> That's in the title of the show. Uh, <laughs> 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 Thanks, <Wow>. guy. <laughs> Thanks, everybody at Netflix. <laughs> Netflix marketing team, you're really fucking stepping your game up. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, and for my favorite streaming movie of the year, and I, like I said, Eric is about to kick himself. Uh, I think I know what you're going to say, and I almost said it. What are you going to say? What do you think I'm going to say? No, just say it, and I'll tell you if I'm right. The Ritual. <laughs> yeah, I was right. Oh, okay. my God. Yeah, I was going to say it, but um, that's a solid pick. But Puka definitely good. like snuck in there for me and like hit me uh, a little bit harder than uh, the ritual did. But the ritual is fucking great. And I actually have the book and I'm about to read it. Yeah, Ooh. the ritual was a lot of fun and it's also really heavy. Yeah. And that was one of those movies that uh, sort of came out like in January that everybody sort of. Yeah, it, it was it like had everybody a saw it immediately. Moment. And that yeah. And then everybody forgot about it. Well, technically, let's be honest here. It technically didn't come out in 2018. It came out in 2017. But, but n- us, nobody us, watched it right, until well, January. Us, us stateside weren't able to see it until 2018. Right, exactly. Well, there you go. Yeah. 
it, it I mean it is based off of a book that is a British author and then it is a British movie that happened so um, but I liked it a lot it's a lot of fun I like Rafe Spall a lot as well he is like one of my favorite actors when it comes to like, on you yeah right <laughs> There is no I in meat pie, but there is an I in team. Uh, he's he's great, uh, and I like him a lot, and that movie is super over the top in the best way at the end. It actually works at the end in a movie where the ending of the movie actually relies on a creature to show up, and it's not like 10 Cloverfield Lane where the movie completely shits the fucking bed. It actually has I something cool. firmly disagree with you on yeah, that Yeah, well, <laughs> as we say in the industry, you're fucking wrong. Um no, the creature design but in the movie... How do we feel about Cloverfield Paradox? <laughs> that oh. movie's a piece of shit. Actually, yep. that might have... that I might have to go back and... Uh, <laughs> we, didn't ask about the, we didn't ask about the worst thing on streaming platforms this year, but no, that would it, firmly it, take it, the fucking cake. That would have yeah, been absolutely. my least favorite franchise movie, for sure. That movie is <laughs> that movie is just straight up dog shit. And it was so bad, but I was like in denial about it, so I watched it twice in a row when I first oh. watched it. Did you watch it once when I you were like, in Egypt? Double punishment. <laughs> I, I watched it, and then I was like, oh, God, wait a second. Hold on. There's got to be good parts to this movie and then i watched it again and it was not <laughs> but hey you know what it was you know what i gotta give netflix credit for being like let's market it during the super bowl so we get all these people to watch it which means they probably made the money back from when paramount dumped it on them so i mean Fair. it would have been super cool if they did that whole like you know one hour marketing thing like and the movie was awesome yeah but, but the i don't fact think that there was, was any bad, chance of it being like, awesome yeah really backfired on them so like now if they ever do anything like that again everybody's just gonna be like hey remember the last time they did this and it was a fucking pile of shit like, you know what the problem yeah, is i think that. we might be in the minority here and thinking that movie was bad I, are we i don't, I don't, so. we, I don't I, know i, I have friends i have friends who out? i have friends who liked it and there were all those like explanation videos online still. which means people watched it and maybe uh, cared about where it placed in the Cloverfield universe in quotations I, here that see that's the thing and that that's I I don't I don't care mm, about the no super one secret should. Cloverfield universe no I don't care about looking for internet clues I just want to watch the movie I just want to watch a movie yeah. or a show or whatever to quote Chris Tashi from 2008 it's a lion oh no it's alive Never mind. It was none of those things. It was a shitty found footage movie. Uh, I do want to say honorable mention. Uh, it wasn't really a show. It was a movie, but not really. The Last Drive-In with Joe Bob Briggs uh, was right. yep. amazing. Um, oh, yeah. And Good time. Yeah. But that's on Shudder, which... Look, it's going to be a weekly thing now on Shudder. Exactly. Well, when you crash the servers, that's what happens. Yeah. So, hey, it's uh, honestly for people, and I know like... Since the time that I've been doing this podcast, I have done a complete 180 on my uh, Shudder opinion. I think the first uh-huh. thing you said was like, Shudder is bad. And yeah, Shudder, uh, Shudder like, was when I, bad. When I was first, like when I first paid for Shudder, when it first came out, it was bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's not shit on it. I mean, there was a bunch of like old Grindhouse movies from the 70s and like weird 60s shit that like I had never even heard of and like honestly wasn't good. There was some stuff that was like kind of cool or whatever, but anything that you would like want to see or that was a quote unquote classic or right. things like that, like didn't come onto the service for quite a while. And. There was also a lot of issues that it had with like, you know, the UI like wouldn't work properly and like and it would like crash all the time and shit like that. But now mm-hmm. it's awesome. It has a ton of great movies and it gets more awesome movies all the time. And it's starting to get like exclusives that are worth watching that cough, are on cough, it. Revenge. Yeah, sh- cough, cough, shutters. revenge. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I got to see Revenge in theaters in New York. It was. I mean, woo, that Mayhem movie is, is a also an exclusive experience. that's on there, and Mayhem fucking kicks ass. Mayhem fucking. was good, yeah. Uh, Mandy is a Shutter exclusive right now. Um, Gosh, and, that oh, I love it. <laughs> uh, we can. We'll come back. At to least that somebody movie, does. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you know, there is. It's really like come around, and now with the whole Joe Bob thing. Um, that's going to be a weekly thing. Honestly, I think that's worth the $5 a month just for that. Like if you're Absolutely. a horror fan uh, and you've never watched like a Joe Bob 
you know, night of movies or whatever. Uh, it's it really like pulls you back to a sort of like old school time of like, you know, almost like Elvira type yeah. stuff, you know, like he's, a, he's the male Elvira really or he she's is. the fe- or she's the female Joe Bob Briggs. I mean, however you want to sling she was it there first. Let's be real. I, she- I would have sex with both of them. Um, Fair. at the same, same time nonetheless <laughs> yeah oh i mean yeah if they were like yo let's do this i'd be like all right here we go i'll bring well, the well jimmy uh, and it's elvira and joe bob so of course they are <laughs> mm-hmm. Boy. yeah but they have to be in costume that's that's true yeah. because let's be honest uh, here if you go meet elvira at a comic book convention and it's just cassandra, cassandra peterson, peterson it's not that great as someone it's not the same as someone who met elvira with his wife because she loved her so much and it was just cassandra peterson yeah yeah, uh, she kind of just looks yeah, like, like a, a normal, like person. a regular lady. Yeah. Yep, I'm she like, just looks like a normal lady with red I'm hair. Like, oh. I'm like, you're just like uh, you could be like a friends with my mom or something. But, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but yep. no. Shutter is. I mean, if you're a horror fan and you don't have Shutter, it, it's five dollars, and it's all these like exclusives or all festival shit that would otherwise n- probably not come out for at least another year or so when it finally yeah. got distribution or maybe got dumped on Netflix somewhere eventually and you never hear about it. Yeah, and they have like shorts that pop up on there like a couple times a yeah, year. Yeah, I've watched like, a lot of shorts on there. They have which Ghost is really Watch cool. and WNUF Halloween special. Yes, they do. God, will you ever shut up about those movies? No, because they're amazing. <laughs> you Will you ever shut up about Mandy? It's just okay. No, I will oh, never yes. shut up about it. <laughs> I know. We're going to have to hear about it here pretty quick. I'm well uh, aware. <laughs> all right. Well, you know, uh, anyways, yes. Our This is our Shutter PSA um, by way of Joe Bob. Please, if you like horror shit, get Shutter. Watch Joe Bob. It's awesome. Support Shutter. Shutter should sponsor us. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't that be great? Shutter. <laughs> we're sucking your dick real hard. Shutter, here. not Come a sponsor, <laughs> but we are hoping one day. Hook it up with a free month, sponsor. Shutter. <laughs> free sponsorship spots <laughs> brought to you by the Culture Cast. Uh, uh. So <laughs> let's move on to. <laughs> I wanted to call this the Super Mario Brothers Tribute Award, but I think we may just call it the Trust the Fungus Award. Oh, I think that's even better, yeah. The So (laughs) So Bad It's Good Award. Yeah, the So Bad It's Good Award, because Super Mario Brothers is a Mm -hmm. bad movie, but it's a fun movie. But unabashedly, one of my favorites. So, Jess, what is your favorite worst movie of 2018? Hmm, man. I gotta be honest... And say that I I don't have. Uh, oh, that's the cop out answer. But right, let's you know just what? Say we all know you loved Gotti. Come on, so doesn't sure. necessarily have to be a movie that came out in 2018, but a movie that you watched in 2018. Shut the fuck maybe up, for Eric. The first you time. can't give Super Mario Brothers as an answer. I'm not. I'm not going <laughs> to give Super Mario Brothers an answer. You know what? Okay, so bad it's good. All right. Oh, you know what I did see and I totally forgot? Oh. And now I'm remembering and it totally fits in this category? The Predator. Oh, <laughs> oh you stole my answer! <laughs> oh, how could you both have the same answer to a movie that is not even worth talking about? God. Because I was so fucked up when I saw it. I had the best time ever. Same. Uh. <laughs> And I didn't see the Meg, and that probably would have been my <laughs> so bad it's good. Uh, if I would have seen it in theaters, <laughs> I would have lost my mind. <laughs> no, yeah, I uh, I watched The Predator, and it was a total like green out night. So I was just like, whoo, whatever. <laughs> green, green out, huh? Boy, yeah, that's what we call it in Ohio. <laughs> that's what. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Simply stunning. <laughs> Oh god! But there we go. So I guess Eric and I have the same answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I really, I have all, next to nothing to add except for the fact that yes, the Predator is a bad movie. Uh, but really god damn it, editing choices. <laughs> you should really just get as drunk and as stoned as humanly possible and still make it through a movie so <laughs> that you can fully enjoy the predator like i enjoyed the predator because god damn it you haven't enjoyed the predator until halfway through the movie you go to the bathroom and you take a big old rip off of your fucking weed pen and go back and really enjoy the second half of that movie <sighs> weed uh, pen right these are the be- these are this is the privilege of living in the west coast <laughs> I yeah. went to the bathroom and I smoked my marijuana pen. Okay. Must yeah, be fucking nice, bro. 
<laughs> yeah, it's like an e cig, but like for weed. I mean, I know what an e cig <laughs> weed pen is, dude. They don't have those in Ohio? Not legally. Weed's not legal <laughs> here, sir. Neither in Nebraska no. nor in Ohio. It's oh, not God. I should have mailed you guys here. weed for Christmas. <laughs> right. I mean, you can't. My birthday's coming up. You could just mail us <laughs> weed, you know? It doesn't have to be Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you, anytime, man. Yeah, you want to Jess's send birthday some, is coming up. You want to yep. send some edibles, bro? I mean, my birthday's only in three months, so and Jess's is this month, so yeah. Uh, there we go. I think we need Pens, to have those. edibles, whatever you want. And FBI, if Special. you're listening, in, listening to our podcast, going to be monitoring my mail. <laughs> no one Special is sending weed. Green edition of the podcast. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> oh Lord. So, do you, so you're not you're not you don't have an answer then. Eric. No, my answer is the same as Jess's. Uh, honestly, it's one of those answers where I don't have an answer that's better than that answer. Right. That movie was my favorite so bad it was a good movie of the year. I will give the Predator credit in that it has the funniest Easter egg I've ever seen in a movie where they reference the fucking original Predator costume design in the Halloween oh, yeah. scene of the movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? That's like the, the biggest compliment I can give is you guys rinse the original Predator suit that Jean-Claude Van Damme won. Wore. Really so, cut. Yeah. About yeah. as deep as it gets, really. Yeah. And uh, I remember when that picture was kind of floating around Twitter and people were like, retweet it if you see the Easter egg. And a bunch of people were like, E.T.? And I was like, ugh, idiots. <laughs> You fucking normies. Fools. Yeah. Jean-Claude Van Damme. When I, that's what I want, is a Jean-Claude Van Damme movie. A, a new one? Just a movie with Jean-Claude Van Damme? I mean, Van there are plenty to choose. But like, a new one. Like, come on. You don't think I've seen all Doesn't of his he movies? Show? He did. Oh, he did have a show. Here's the thing oh. I want with Jean-Claude Van Damme. I want a Jean-Claude Van Damme movie that's like John Wick, but just with Jean-Claude Van Damme instead. Uh, didn't they have that movie? It was called JCVD. Yeah, but I'm not talking about a movie that takes itself super seriously. John Wick has like a certain sense of tongue and cheek to it. So did JCVD, dude. Oh, well, I didn't. So I haven't I see it. seen John Wick, but I heard that there's a new movie coming to Netflix that's mm, like John oh, Wick with Mad, with Mads Mikkelsen, oh, and I love uh, Mads Mikkelsen. Oh, God. Mads Mikkelsen, deliver us from these bad movies. God, he's so God. Love him so you know what? Much. Mads Mads Mikkelsen is in two movies that are coming to streaming services slash theaters soon, and mm-hmm. one of them is called Polar. And the other and one's the called, other one Arctic. called Arctic. <laughs> <laughs> it sure is, isn't it? <laughs> oh my god, I fucking lost my. So mind what you're saying is the three of us should write a script for a movie called Frigid and see if he'll yes. make it in 2019 or 20. Starring Mads Mikkelsen, only starring Mads Mikkelsen. That's right. It'll be the uh, vor- the the Arctic Vortex trilogy. <laughs> but Jess, you've never seen John Wick. I have not. Oh my God! I know. I have so you seen John Atomic Wick first Blonde? Came out, I, yes, I have. Oh, Atomic Blonde is like John Wick, but bad, but bad, real bad. Yeah, it wasn't great. <laughs> Which was unfortunate because I did really actually want to see Atomic Blonde, and the Atomic soundtrack's Blonde does pretty decent. That, like, it has that one really cool sequence that's like all one shot where they did like yeah. a bunch of insane choreography. But, like, imagine that, but, like, the entire movie of John Wick. I mean, it's not one shot, but, like, the choreography the entire time is the, the most The movie doesn't shit stop. Seen. It, like, doesn't stop. The movie it's is, like, always moving. Just Gun constant food forward food momentum. For all right. 90 minutes. All right. I'll start and to check. When, when they kill a dog, out, and it makes you real sad. Oh, well, that always makes me sad. <laughs> just matter, whatever movie but then the bad guys, there. But then the bad guys get their comeuppance, yeah. so it's okay. It's like... Well, good. It's like what I wish the Marley and Me sequel was. What? <laughs> yeah, me too. Owen Wilson just There's fucking going and killing somebody who killed his dog, even though his dog died of cancer. Oh, that's terrible. Jesus, way to ruin the movie. That movie you haven't seen Marley and Me? No, I purposely uh-huh. didn't see Marley and Me because I don't. if I want to cry for two hours, I'll fucking watch two episodes of House on ha- Haunting Hill House. Yeah. Have a much better time doing it. I'll watch two episodes of House if I want to uh, cry also. <laughs> House. <laughs> You're a dick, you know that? <laughs> Uh, my so bad it's good movie. My trust the fungus trusting award um, uh. <laughs> uh, brought to you by Morel Mushrooms is uh, it, it has to be Venom. It's not a no, good movie. Okay. 
it's not a good movie by any stretch of the imagination, but yeah. I it, I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I was going to. Yeah, I could see that. It's actually like a really like stupid goddamn movie, but it's not so oh, stupid that I couldn't. Yeah. It's not so stupid that I couldn't enjoy it. Yeah, it's <laughs> funny. It has a bunch of funny parts to it that like I wasn't expecting to laugh at, but. I feel yeah. like when I get my birthday present from Eric, I'll watch it. <laughs> <laughs> what you don't understand is he's just going to send go. you venom. You're going to, you're, you, <laughs> it's just going to be, uh, it's just going to be a big ass edible, and then it's going to be John Wick and Venom on Blu ray. Fantastic. Here you go. Here's a full day of enjoyment for you. <laughs> but, and, and, you know, the thing with Venom is, is Venom edged out my other choice. And I was kind of going in between them because I also was going to say Rampage because that movie was really dumb. Oh, <laughs> Rampage. It was so much fun, but it was really dumb. Oh, it was the stupidest movie. Oh, wow. Yeah. God, all these movies that I totally forgot about. Yeah. It, well, it okay. came out. It the came out like Paradox? March or Fucking April. Crampage. Crampage. Uh, <laughs> Rampage. I would totally watch Krampus Rampage. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the thing about Rampage. The Rock isn't even the best part of that movie. It's Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Oh yeah, he's he chews up that movie for sure. Yeah, he but does he like plays the, like a complete caricature. Yeah, he plays like a I'm a fucking FBI or other government agency dude, yeah. and it's just like what? He's I'm a CIA guy with the cowboy boots and the spurs. It's like oh dear god, boy having fun, huh? Jeffrey Dean Morgan. It's probably better than being on Walking Dead, right? Right. Is he still on that show? Uh, I don't know. Is that show still doing anything? I think that show's still on, but I definitely... <laughs> oh, it's absolutely still on, because Scott Gimple can't get enough of himself, but... People have told me that it is supposedly going back to its horror roots. Uh-huh. Yeah, well, that's and what I people ask, always say. <laughs> when was it horror ever? But did you know that it's not about the zombies... Oh. oh God! Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> the Walking Dead are the people. Moving right <laughs> along, Me just first. like the Muppets. Jesus Christ! Uh, all right, so let's <laughs> just get... like the Muppets. You said what? moving right along. <laughs> You ever heard that song? <laughs> no. What? What are you talking about? Wait, you've never you are you actually saying you've never heard the song "Moving Right Along" from the Muppets? I don't think so. <sighs> what the? F- Maybe. What are you doing? It, with- it, it's like Fozzie and Kermit. Yeah, and Fozzie's the- driving the car in the Muppet movie, dude. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm, come on. <laughs> What do you mean, come on? I always envision you and I, if we were puppets, as Fozzie Bear and Kermit. Come on. Aw. <laughs> That's cute. Which one oh, is which? I always envision us as, like, the two old guys who talk shit from the balcony. Yes. That's, no, that's, that's, that's definitely oh, me. Man. Definitely Waldorf. <laughs> Sattler and Waldorf. <laughs> oh, God. Gosh, Jesus Christ. Um, so let's talk Our about, and Marley this, I'm not going to throw Eric under the bus here. <laughs> Marley and Marley. I was, uh, <laughs> that's a Christmas movie right there. That yeah, is legitimately sure is. a Christmas movie. Christmas yeah, Carol. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, it says it right in the title. I, I'm not going to throw Eric under the bus here, but let's talk about the Get Out Award, which is the biggest surprise of 2018. The breakout movie of the year. The movie that everyone thought was going to be bad and actually was really good. And we're not talking so bad it's good because Venom could have been here for me. I didn't put it here because Venom was still a shit fucking movie. Oh, that you so, thought it was going to be bad, and then it was good. Yeah. So a movie that you thought was had no chance of succeeding, and it actually turned out to be relatively good? Question mark? Or, or <laughs> that you didn't have any expectations for, and it turned out to fucking blow your brain out right. of its ass. Uh, so, Jess, what would, you, what would you give the Get Out Award for 2018? Um, so I put in, in for mine, I, I picked um, a movie called American Animals. Ooh. Which was a movie that I had no idea what it was about at all going into it. Um, went to see it at the local theater here. And it's a documentary-ish about these three kids who uh, were going, like these three kind of prep school, going to college, upper crust, you know, white suburbia guys who are just bored with life. And they were, I can't remember where they go to college, but there's um, this really 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 rare book um several rare books like darwin's books and things like that and they decide to do this like grand heist to steal these these epic books that they're going to somehow sell on the black market 
and make all this money out of, except for the fact that they're in this tiny glass container in the middle of their college library. That, of course, is always swarming with people. And it's based on a true story, and it is told. The reason why I liked it and why it surprised me so much was the way that it was done, because it is a documentary, but a majority of it is done as like a movie. Like you get your documentary asides where they go and you see the actual people and they're talking, but then you go in and you have, instead of like a recreate, you have a movie with actual actors like Evan Peters um, from American Horror Story and oh, whatever the else. hot guy from American Horror Story. Yes, huh? the hot, what, what do you mean the hot guy? It's a Ryan Murphy show. <laughs> oh. All of the guys are hot. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? I love me some Cuba Gooden Jr. <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh, but, <man. laughs> Eric, did you wake up there for a second? Yeah, you said tuba, and I was like, oh, I'm in. Tuba? <laughs> tuba Gooding Jr.? Cuba. That's mean. It did sound like you said tuba, though. No, it's Cuba. <laughs> you said uh, tuba, Eric. You said I tuba. I Cuba. Not he went tuba. to the bathroom. and <laughs> His name's Cuba, his not Cuba. <laughs> oh. I think American so Animals was, will be known as the movie that, that Movie Pass put out, right? It, oh, it wasn't a Movie Pass movie. That's true. Yeah. Ironically, I did not have a Movie Pass to use on it. I think they were like dying at that point. At, well, n- no. But it was when Gotti came out was the movie that they were. Th- <sighs> American Animals came out over the summer, which was like the peak Movie Pass time. That's yeah. True. Uh, movie Pass. How many movies I saw the first half of this year? <laughs> Rest in peace. I. I got to see when when I was traveling for work, I managed to see a few movies and a couple of them were in New York and holy shit, they're so expensive. But I had movie pass at the time and I didn't pay for a single movie in that city and it was great. Almost feels like stealing, right? A little bit. I saw Revenge and Ghost Stories in the same day at the IFC Center. Nice. It was great. Huh. But yeah, American Animals. I had no expectations, no idea what it was. I thought it was a really interesting way and fresh way to do a documentary. I'd like to see that happen more often. It's cool to watch the... At one point, there's a scene in where Evan Peters' character is very unreliable. You don't know if, like... Because supposedly he went and talked to these people that he knew and, and whatever, were gonna make a deal, and then he came back to the States. But do we ever actually know if he left the country and not talked to these people? We don't know, because his friend just dropped him off at the airport. He didn't see him get on the plane. So at one point, like, they're just sitting... At, he's sitting in the car, and Evan Peters is in the driver's seat, and then the real guy is sitting next to him, and he goes, did it really happen like that? And they're like, oh. <laughs> so it's just nice. cool to see the actual people interacting in an interesting way. Yeah, and, and a couple people I knew told me to go see it. I, I just was, again, never got around to it. So what uh, what would you pick, Eric, for your biggest surprise of 2018? Oh, man. Biggest surprise of 2018. Well, this is a tough one because there was a lot of movies that I watched um, that I was like excited to watch, but like tempered my own expectations because I was afraid that they weren't going to be as good as I wanted them to be. But then when I saw them, they met and then far exceeded my expectations. Um, And that happened multiple times. Uh, So this is a tough... uh, God, this is a tough one for me. But I think maybe the one that I was most um, sort of like, ah, there's no way it's going to be good. Um, but I'm kind of excited to watch it anyways. And then it completely um, ruined my life for 24 hours oh, uh, is Hereditary. <laughs> um yeah, no, Hereditary was one of those movies that, uh, you know, you hear all the buzz coming out of Sundance and everybody's like, oh, my God, it's the most fucked up movie ever. It's the scariest thing so since The Exorcist. Yeah. And I was like, nope, there's no fucking way. It's they the need to stop saying the it's the next Exorcist. They say because that about no everything movie and then... is ever going to be The Exorcist. Well, why like is The said, Exorcist? People also need to stop shine. believing that. Well, like, wh- also, why does anyone think that The Exorcist is a measuring stick for anything anyways? <laughs> Because of the reactions that people had, people were shitting in, in the seats. They were propelling like themselves 19- out of the seat by the diarrhea out of their ass. Oh, come but on! But that's nineteen seventy what? Yeah, people one, had more explosive diarrhea then. So it's like, So you know, audiences today have, I think, a much you know uh, tougher stomach for horrific shit than they did back in the early 70s or whatever in the 70s a film like a serbian film was not a thing yet we're living in 2019 and it's like a film like a serbian film exists 
and it's the absolutely most fucked up thing I've ever seen. So stop saying it's the next Exorcist because a Serbian film is the next Exorcist because it is the worst fucking experience of my life watching that movie. I mean, yeah, like, there's yeah, but there's uh, nothing scary about a Serbian though. film. Yeah, it's just <clears throat> not about like, the Exorcist either. Well, I disagree. I uh, so the Exorcist was something that like got scarier for me as I got older. Like it was not. I saw it like, the first time I saw the Exorcist. I was like twelve. <laughs> <laughs> and my friend and I saw it, and we laughed our asses off the whole time. I think that movie does get scary the more you really understand, like, what the family is going through and everything. And, like, For what me, it's, it's just l- the invasion part. Just the yeah. Ugh. I, ugh. Anyways. But, yeah. Hereditary. Definitely one of those movies that, like... I was excited to see the. I watched. It was one of those movies where, like, I saw the trailer for it when it first came out, and then I never watched another trailer for it again because I was like, I don't want mm-hmm. this movie to be ruined for me. Blah 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 blah. You know, you hear all these great things, and it's one of those movies that I was totally afraid was going to be overhyped for me going into it. Um, and I feel like I did Chris a disservice by overhyping it for him after I went and saw the movie. Boy, did um, you ever. <laughs> Uh, but you know, that was like my like immediate reaction, like walking out of that movie, uh, was just like this raw, like, oh my God, that was fucking terrifying and totally insane. And it's not perfect. And it's not, you know, like, I don't think it does anything particularly new. Yeah, but I think it's but it's still good. It just does all of those things in a really, really effective way for me personally. Um, it's I have now watched that movie like several times, and every time I watch that movie, it still leaves me like with this hole in my chest. Like I can't I literally cannot describe to you the feeling that I have after I watch that movie. And it's Is there a hole in your chest big enough to stick a VHS in? Uh, maybe, uh, uh, perhaps. And that would mark the second poster in my, <laughs> in my living room that I'm oh. sitting next to. Oh. Uh, you have, <laughs> you have taste good posters. taste in posters. Uh, the long the live so the new go. flesh. Long live the new flesh. <laughs> if there's two movie tattoos I will get, and uh, one of them is for sure long live the new flesh, and the other one is for sure trust the fungus. So, um, yes. Uh, but anyways, yeah, Hereditary. Definitely a movie that was like super hyped, and then I was like, uh, there's no way it's good. It's probably not going to be good. I'm ex- I want to see it, but it's not going to be good. And then I saw it and I was like, holy shit, it's fucking it's really good. <laughs> it's really, really good. Really fucking good. Especially because it's, and for me, it gets a Jordan Peele award because it's Ari Aster's breakout movie. You know, it's his first feature. Um, just Wait, like it's. I like Jordan how this is Peele. the Jordan Peele award. It's probably, that's a better, that's probably <laughs> a better Peele name. Award. Yeah. Yeah, it's a Jordan Peele Award. I mean, it's the Get Out Award. It's the, you know, uh, whatever award. It's whatever it is. Uh, but yeah, I feel like, for me, Terry gets the Get Out Award of the Year. Chris, so, so back to you in the so, studio. <laughs> so my pick will actually be even more kind of on the nose in regards to uh, Jordan Peele being the inspiration for the award. So uh, the, movie, uh, the movie that I chose... Um, I'm not going to say what it is yet, but the it was a writer director who wrote it and directed it, and yeah, I, that's what a writer director does. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> uh, say I'm a writer producer. Ah, I see, write and I produce. Suck a dick, Eric. Oh, I uh, thought for sure you wrote and uh, gaffed because. <laughs> oh uh, yes, I'm definitely a gaffer for sure. She's a writer Watch me producer. String lights. <laughs> Eric, aren't gaffs. you? Eric, you're a writer fluffer, right? Yeah, I'm a fluffer. Ooh. A I, I, I actually you fluff while you write. Oh, That's man. amazing. I, I don't write while I fluff. I fluff about writing. Wow. Nice. Uh, so the, the guy I chose um, in the, the movie that he directed, um, previously he'd been known for such witty lyricisms as my junk is so long that it hangs and swings. And at the nude beach, people think I'm looking for lost rings. However, he came up with one of the most heartfelt, and I didn't pick it as my favorite film of the year, but one of the best movies I saw all year, Bo Burnham's Eighth Grade. Uh, Absolutely one of the best movies I saw all year. And also, coming from someone like Bo Burnham, who said he treats his objects like women, and his flow so cold, he takes a tampon from a polar bear... Um, and yet he comes and yet he releases this movie that he wrote that 
somehow taps into the eighth grade psyche of a teenage girl in a way mm-hmm. that, and just te- a teenager in general. I mean, you know, it, it does have an obviously female slant to it, but as a, t- you know, as any teenager, you know, growing up now, I'm sure anyone, any teenager could relate to it. But it's one of those films where when I watched it, I kind of had a hard time believing that Bo Burnham had written it because everything up until that point had been so crass and so over the top. And yet he releases this film that is so reserved and heartfelt and serious, yet funny at the same time. And it's just one of the best movies I saw all year. And the fact that he's a comedian transitioning into a writer director position in film uh, is it's really impressive. And fingers crossed. I know the Academy Awards mean nothing because they really mean fuck all, in my opinion. And for most people who know what award shows are about they shouldn't mean yeah. anything but mm-hmm. getting mainstream recognition is a big part of the academy awards and if he gets nominated for anything that's a win in my book for the movie because the movie is amazing and there's a reason it's rated r yet they were setting up screenings in middle schools across the country for the movie because it's a movie wow. that is it's timeless and timely in the best way huh. sounds like a movie that's gonna make me cry God, yeah, I really need to watch this movie. I guess it, uh, I do it, need to really watch this movie. Yeah, I've never seen it. I, I haven't seen it either. I heard like I heard the same that that similar buzz when it came out, and then I kind of forgot about it. But yeah, no, I, that sounds like something that I really need to actually take time to watch. Yeah, it's a it's a really great movie, and the scene around the fire at the end of the movie is the thing that sticks out and really resonated with me personally. Um, uh, it's it's one of those movies where. I had heard so how good it was, and I watched it, and it lived up, it lived up to the hype. And very rarely, <laughs> hereditary, uh, do movies live up to the hype. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Eric. Uh, I'll never ever tell you if a movie is good or not ever again. <laughs> That's a lie. We'll be talking about good movies tomorrow through text messaging. You watch. <laughs> <laughs> Glass was amazing. Uh oh. Uh. Oh jeez! All right, so we are we're in the home stretch here. Um, we got three more. It seems like we're in the home stretch. Yeah. This is gonna have a, strap know. in for another two hours of <laughs> worth of conversation. For the strap last two in, questions. or in, or in your case, Eric, strap it on. Um, strap it on. <laughs> uh, I I don't know what we wanted to kind of give this award its name. Kind of what uh, kind of jokey bullshit superlative, um, and maybe we can come up with it as we're talking about it, but. Your biggest disappointment in 2018, and it can be the, anything. Uh, the Eric, the Eric's dad award. <laughs> <laughs> He's not mad. He's just disappointed. Yeah. Well, that could be the Chris's dad award too. You do know that. I mean, it's you know, <laughs> you're not the only one, Eric. <laughs> oh, it's man. not that I'm mad at you. I'm just. I'm just disappointed. Yeah, he's not mad. He's just disappointed. <laughs> and, you know, somehow that's – I'd rather you be mad at me. It's somehow yeah. way worse. Yeah, it's way worse. Not somehow. It, it just is way worse. The question is, do they know that it's way worse? <laughs> or do yes, we just interpret it? No, way? they know. That's why they say <laughs> exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Jess, so what is your Eric's Dad Award for 2018, the biggest disappointment of 2018 for you? Castle Rock. Oh, oh, damn! Who with authority, Castle Rock. She was ready with that. I know. Yeah. God damn! Zing, zing! Arrow to the heart. Yep. Who wow. lose Castle Rock was just. I was so pumped for that show, man. And I don't. I. I. I, I gotta say that I. I do like the new It movie, and I. I am you know huge Stephen King fan, so I, I kind of like this whole like you know where Stephen King's cool again. I mean, I guess he was never not cool, but we're, we're just really getting a lot King. more of his like properties and stuff Steve again. Steve Asans so, seeing him. Did you and I both what? say Steve Assance at the same time, Eric? I said Renaissance, and then you said Steve Assance. I like we Eric are better. Steve Assance. <laughs> <laughs> I think King Assance, maybe. But then Castle Rock just did nothing. It did a whole lot of nothing. It was, I don't even remember how many episodes of nothing, because that's how much nothing it was. <laughs> huh. Sissy Spacek was the best part of the show, which is great. I still. Don't I? I, just, I still don't honestly know what. The, did you either of you watch it? I'm really nope. No, nope, I yeah. watched um like the first half of it and just never finished it. Yeah, it it goes nowhere. You never get any answer really as to what is going on with not Alexander Skarsgård, the other skit Bill. That's his name. Uh, with the guy who played the clown. the clown. Yeah, he and he's not the clown. So there's that. 
and it's just eh, no it was it was boring it, it kind of felt a little like I don't know you remember like in the early 2000s when they were trying to start to have like some kind of horror television but it always kind of had that kind of more soft feel to it where it was oh just yeah kind I mean, of like, like when they redid uh, the like- shining for like 40 some year old yeah like your 40 to 50 year old women like just yeah like, like rose red the tv yes. movie yeah that shit that's what it felt like hearts yeah. in atlantis felt like a lot of that and then i i guess my my honorable mention to my biggest disappointment was halloween but oh hot take yeah. is that a hot yeah. take because you didn't like it either <laughs> <laughs> i mean i don't know that's spicy. I mean, Ooh, coming in hot. I feel spicy. <laughs> I feel a little bad saying it because I know. Don't I'm feel bad, people, but ugh. don't feel bad. If you feel bad <laughs> saying it, then they're doing their job by making you feel bad. Fair, but no yeah, bad. no. I just I was I was uh, Halloween was just uh, fine. It was fine. It was, I was just hoping fine. It would be better than fine. That was, and that's and that's really the distinction between Holly uh, Halloween Halloween uh, <laughs> Halloween and Halloween. Hall- okay. Halloween wasn't bad. It was just fine. Fine. Which is which is the ultimate. I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. Exactly. <laughs> uh, I am it's indifferent. It's not bad. It's just fine. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, um, okay, here we go. Here it comes, guys. Are you going to, like, floor us here? The tirade of all tirades Ooh. that's about to happen. Get your popcorn ready. Mm-hmm. Or the goddamn nun. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, this is not the least favorite film of 2018, bro. It might not. How do you know? <laughs> oh, the biggest disappointment and the least favorite are two different awards? Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> Oh, they are? Yes. Oh, okay. Then my biggest disappointment, for sure, is... Uh, well, since you already said Halloween, uh, I fully agree with Halloween in the statement where it's it's just not... Uh, it's not a necessarily bad movie. It is a, like, not well... Issue. Yeah, it's just a... It's a well-made it's a movie. F- yes. But it's Ooh. just, like, not a... It's competent while still not being creative. <laughs> Oof! Ouch! You guys Sounds like, like my, retreads? My I sure do. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was. It, it's more fan service than it really is anything else. Um, right, and even weirdly like, a large amount of off-screen kills. And I'm fine with off-screen <laughs> kills, but then when you have the brutal on-screen kills, don't just copy the ones like from uh, 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 the much better Rob Zombie Halloween Two, Agreed. where you stomp a guy's fucking face in. The Rob Zombie one did it way better. It took like five minutes for him to crush that guy's skull. Not one stop. Well, that's because Taylor Maine's foot is the size of like a dino. Like just, it's huge. Like it's it, huge. He's the biggest, gnarliest. I met him once Michael in real Myers. life. I'm like, you can't be a real person. Remember when Viola Davis gets murdered and then some, and then some really more, hard, and then like an hour later, she's still not being done being murdered. Yes. Yeah. It's the best. She's an Oscar winner. She sure is. <laughs> Anyways, uh, no, we. Uh, I think we've already uh, touched on this movie a little bit, but I'm going to touch it some more. Um, in the uh, biggest disappointment. So uh, I was going to say you're going to touch it in the no-no zone. I was like, <laughs> no. bro, no, not this I podcast. Get, I don't want to be me too. Uh, it's actually live. it's times <laughs> times upped. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Anyways. Um, no, I'm not whatevering time's up. I'm just whatevering the... Sure. It doesn't matter. Whatever. <laughs> sure. I'm, dig- I'm digging Misogynistic perpetuator you are. Oh, God damn it. I'm never going to live this down. <laughs> Luckily, nobody listens to this podcast. So I'm not worried. <laughs> That's what um, you think. Anyways, uh, the Cloverfield Paradox. This is my, is my biggest disappointment. As a avid Cloverfield Universe fan, who is one of those huge nerds who plays the ARGs and goes around the internet looking for clues about the, you know... It's a lion! Larger Cloverfield universe at large or whatever, and as a huge fan of the first movie and a really big fan of the second movie also, I think they're both fantastic and both very different and awesome in their own different ways. I was super stoked about watching the Cloverfield Paradox and then really <laughs> defeated and sad and just disappointed after I watched it um, after the Super Bowl. Because it was one of those movies where it felt like it was a totally different movie that they just threw in a bunch of Cloverfield shit after the fact. You know, like, y- yeah, you know what it felt like? It felt like those like last several Hellraiser movies that weren't 
when they were originally written were just yeah. other movies and then they, they were, just shoved yeah. Hellraiser shit into them. Yeah. Um, and said, yeah, these are totally a part of that world. And yeah, those are also yeah, shoving like. shit into, into pinheads holes. And that would be a movie better than the last Hellraiser movie. I, I would rather more. watch Hellraiser hell world than Cloverfield paradox again. Um, may, I think I might agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's more fun. <laughs> yeah, Cloverfield Paradox, they tried to answer the age-old question of where, where the fuck is all of this shit coming from, and uh, they just like didn't do it in a satisfying way, and in a way that like actually made any sense. They really lost it. It's a it. paradox, Eric. Well, yeah, they... Oh, <laughs> God damn it. I give up. That's it. I'm out of here! <laughs> Got him! Got him. Zing, zing! No, I didn't like it either. <laughs> yeah, it was bad. I remember we like watched it after the Super Bowl and skipped around, and I was like, you know, I don't have to go back and watch it. And then I did, and I was like, I shouldn't have watched it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it was real bad. Did Eric actually leave? Did he? <laughs> I think he probably <laughs> went to go pee. Probably. Or, or maybe take a poo. Maybe All go right, back. have a tinkle. <laughs> oh, God. I'm back. Uh, my biggest disappointment uh, for 2018. Oh, oh, ta 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 ta. I'm, so many to choose from. I, yeah, <laughs> the, 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 the sad, the sad truth of 2018. No, you know my, what? I, I, there wasn't a lot actually. I think there was no, a lot. No, it was more a pretty lackluster like year. My biggest disappointment is Jurassic World: Fallen Kingdom. Oh, that was oh. pretty. That was pretty disappointing. It, ha- uh-huh. <laughs> it had a lot of things going for it, and it squandered every single one of them. And made me cry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because cry? of the Brachiosaurus scene. Because of the Brachiosaurus. Oh. oh, I was about to be like, <laughs> because of how bad James it was. Cromwell died. Like, <laughs> that's did that. We're really big James Cromwell fans. Just no. love Babe. Babe is the best. <laughs> I uh, I would also give honorable mention to Fantastic Beast Two because that movie. Oh, I didn't even see it. So I didn't see it. I, I watched the first it. one. I kind of don't care about Harry Potter movies. I anymore. watched it so high, and ooh, I'm glad I watched it high because I don't think I could comprehend it. So yeah. <laughs> it was I don't real think, dumb. Uh, yeah, I don't think comprehension really has anything to do with it. I Johnny think, Depp I just kind of needs to go away. Yeah, like really, for, like for good. He just needs to be Guy Lapointe from now on. Well, no, I think he's pretty much on his way out now that they dropped him as you know. Jack Sparrow. I mean, they were going to drop him, though, right? Like, they're right. rebooting it. Why do you need to be in the reboot? It right. Reboot. Reboot means he, bye-bye. Because he needs money. Someone's How do you guess. reboot He's a broke. series that you've been literally making movies for for the last, like, 15 yeah, years? Yeah, it never ended. It's not ending. It's not a reboot. You have to still be... It just. Uh, it's yeah, like Spider-Man no. now. They're just going to reboot it every five years, no matter what. Yeah. But until I, they find somebody. Oh, I mean, I don't know. We have some Spider-Man things to talk about, but I'll save it for later. It's pronounced Spoderman. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, Fantastic Beasts and Jurassic. Essentially, sequels to movies that came out in what 2015. Yeah, uh, yeah, were not great. The three-year wait did not live up to the hype, and that's a disappointment because I liked the first Jurassic World and. By that account, I liked Jurassic Park, but who doesn't? And I liked Fantastic Beasts, the first one. I thought it was a serviceable Harry Potter. That's like saying I like. Tangentially related film. Did you also, therefore, like uh, The Force Awakens? Because you like A New Hope? Yeah, because it is laterally (laughs) related to A New Hope. Yeah. Is it even lateral? I think it's like adjacent. Yeah. Well, lateral, not even adjacent. Lateral is a like, juxtaposed. <laughs> is it lateral yeah. and adjacent the same thing? I think it is superimposed. Uh, actually, I think lat- no lateral put them would on be top next of each other. To- but isn't yeah. adjacent next to as well? Not right next to. Ah, uh, fair enough. Well, re- regardless, <laughs> who For- knows? Force Awakens, New Hope, uh, Jurassic, Jurassic World, World, Jurassic, Jurassic World. World. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, okay. But, yeah, those are my that. That's my biggest disappointment. Just sequels underperforming. So, well, we've got two left least favorite film and favorite film so right. uh jess i'm gonna kick it to you first what was your least favorite film of 2018 truth or dare <laughs> wait you want to ask us another you want me to ask you another question i'm just kidding no. that movie was <laughs> that movie was so bad even marijuana couldn't help it. <laughs> i like your yeah, immediate truth. reaction was just <laughs> 
Just nah. <laughs> <laughs> Just laugh. Yeah. Truth or dare. I saw oh, it. It was yeah, terrible. It was, it was a horrible piece of shit. And the thing is, is I, I, you know, I, I like Happy Death Day. Oh, that movie that, was great. That you got sucker. You got suckered in by the Blumhouse movie? name, didn't you? I can't wait to see the second one. <laughs> but you got suckered into Truth or Dare by that Blumhouse name, huh? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I was, yeah, actually, because I thought, well, if I'm if I liked a movie that's basically just Groundhog Day with fucking Fifty Cent in the trailer, <laughs> I was like, yeah, fine, Truth or Dare, that should be fine. I like that girl from Pretty Little Liars, whatever her name is. And I just no, it's just awful. It's dumb. And then they end this with the with the sorry spoilers, but I don't care. It's a shitty movie. Don't watch it. <laughs> they end with just well, we're just gonna have to tell everybody about this curse so that everyone in the world can be a curse with it. And they'll just keep having to ask each other truth or dare until we all eventually die. Wow, that's how it ended. Yeah, they wow. just oh, they basically it, it ends with the pretty little liars girl and whoever else her friend are is that survives, and they like send out because at the beginning it's established that pretty little liars girl has a large social media following. Oh god damn it! And so she makes all these videos and things like that. So, in the end of the movie, they say, well, I have all these followers. I'll make this video telling everybody about this thing and saying, well, sorry, now you have to play the game. That's <laughs> fucked. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, me and Chris have a story about one time where uh, once upon a time in Los Angeles, when Chris came to visit, uh, we got real, real drunk and really uh, drunk. smoked a bunch <laughs> of the whistle mm -hmm. and then... Decided that we were going to try to do something that we had never before done on the podcast and do a live commentary on a movie <laughs> um, that we had both never seen before. But wanted to watch. But wanted to watch. And we were fucked up. And it was in the middle of the summer, so it was pretty hot. But it was still like midnight, so it wasn't that hot. But mm -hmm. there was no air conditioning in Eric's garage. And it's Because LA. if we put the air conditioning on, the microphones would have just been like... <sighs> Yeah. The entire time. They're in space, my God. <laughs> so, yeah, that was that happened when I was in LA and <laughs> recording interviews. It was so hot in the house, my glasses slid off my face. <laughs> <laughs> uh yes, this happens. Uh but yeah, we got what, twenty minutes into the movie and we stopped and decided Truth that or Dare. We, yeah, it was oh, Truth well, or Dare. Oh, it was Truth or Dare. Okay, yeah. It was Truth or Dare. We decided uh, that it was no longer worth it to do anything that had to do with that movie. Uh, we nope. were not going to tough out the rest of the movie because uh, it wasn't worth dying of heat exhaustion <laughs> to no. make fun of the worst movie that we'd both ever seen. That's why and I it's said, Jess, not, even, Jess, not so even bad. It's good. Well, that's it's why I bad. said, Jess, that not even marijuana could fix truth or dare. No, no, yeah. no. Nope. Which is, I mean, that's hard pressed to find something it doesn't fix. Not even as the kids are saying, <laughs> a big old fatty, no, big old fat that. roach full of the marijuanas. <laughs> yeah, no, nobody says that. Not the even us. <laughs> yeah, the devil's lettuce, the reefer. <laughs> not even the reefer could fucking fix that movie. The reefer man. <laughs> yeah, uh, no amount of alcohol slash weed could have made that movie good. Nope. <laughs> nope. No. Anyways, there you go. speaking of movies that no amount of substance uh, abuse can make good, The Nun! Here it is. <laughs> I'm going to yell about this movie because I hate it. Uh, the Nun. 100% uh, the worst movie I've ever seen in my entire life, and I've seen a lot of really bad movies. Uh, God damn it. I think the I think what made it worse is I spent money to go see the nun ah. in the theater and I sat through the whole fucking thing. Uh god damn it, dude. It was just one of those movies where it was like I'm not a super huge conjuring like universe fan to mm -hmm. begin with. Um I, I find appreciate... it weird that there's a conjuring universe. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean <laughs> but I but I like Does it. Everything though. need a universe. I, I like appreciate it. that it exists. Yeah, me too. Be because you know, it's one of those things like where the whole universal dark universe thing like mm -hmm. sounded really hokey to me, but like I was excited for it because I was like, cool. Must have sounded universal. pretty hokey to the people who tried to make it too. Yeah, yeah. Universe, universal monster movies, like, you know, let's like bring back the classic monsters and like do all of that and shit. And monster like, rally movies, yeah. Yeah, it seems cool. Uh, you know, and then uh, they really fucked it up with the first goddamn movie, and uh, now we're not getting that. So, so you're I saying guess we that that dark universe logo isn't going anywhere? 
It would appear not. <laughs> yeah, the evidence would appear to the contrary, would it not? And hey, Johnny um, Depp was the invisible man, so motherfucker didn't even have to do anything. He just sits in a studio and has his lines fed to him over his earpiece. That's true. Uh, but yeah, so I, I mean, I don't know. I didn't have really any expectations for The Nun, except for... The insane amount of marketing that was put out by um, whoever is marketing the, that yeah, movie, I whatever. I don't know. I don't know who's like the production company behind all of that shit. But um, Universal? Oh, it, no, I think it's 20th Century. I don't know. Doesn't matter to me. Knowing their because, luck, it's probably Sony. Because mm. they marketed it like a marketed it. Mm. <laughs> marketed it? They so mad marketed, <laughs> marketed that movie like a motherfucker. So you could not go anywhere without seeing the nun everywhere. I don't know what mm-hmm. it was like in Ohio or in goddamn uh, Louisiana or wherever it is you live, fucking Chris. <laughs> uh, but goddamn it. Louisiana. Did you say I live in Louisiana? I don't know where you live. Do I sound like I live on a bed of... Do I sound like I live on a bed of crawdads? You sound like you live in a flyover state. (laughs) You too. (laughs) I can hear the airplanes fly on by and nobody cares. You guys both sound like you live in states with crappy basketball teams. So don't talk to me. Hey. (laughs) Uh, oh, sorry. We took you. We took. We, we took LeBron your best player. <laughs> That's fine. We yeah, the hometown, the hometown player has, as we would say, a big old piece of shit. <laughs> Anywho, uh, yeah, I don't know what it was like around you guys, but around me in Los Angeles, every other goddamn billboard was a nun billboard. Well, and we don't the market movie billboards really. The marketing was crazy. Like it everywhere you went, every fucking third commercial on TV was a goddamn nun commercial. Like, and to be honest, like I was kind of excited for it at least a little bit because like I that was. was that was the coolest part of the second Conjuring movie was that nun sequence. Um, and I was like, cool. If that's their jumping off point, like then this movie is gonna be fucking wicked awesome. And like I like religious horror movies. Like I think when they're done really right, they're like some of the most fucked up movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this movie was just honestly a bad cliche piece of shit from the very beginning to the very end. And like the acting wasn't great. Uh, and the story was nigh intelligible and, uh, everything about it was stupid and I hated it. And I will never stop talking about how bad that movie was. So does uh, do they end? Uh, I'm, if I ever do watch this, I don't give a shit about spoilers. But so the purpose of having Vera Farmiga's younger sister is that just to be like, ha ha, look, we have our younger sister, or do they like end up relating her character to like? They say no, they not. say no. that they might. They say they that, s- that there's like we might do said. something with it in the future. They mm-hmm. have confirmed that in future movies, it will all make sense why they have cast them both. And so they're just like being coy and stupid with it. Um, Look at this. Oh, it's Warner Brothers, by the way. Oh, yeah. Uh, But yeah, anyways, I don't know. It was like uh, the year before uh, they had uh, Annabelle creation or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, Which was was better than the first (laughs) Annabelle. Right. And that was one of those movies that I was like, oh, there's no way that this movie is going to be good. Let's fucking take a shit on this movie. And it was fucking pretty good. And I was like, wow, this is kind of awesome. And so I was hoping that the nun was going to be in the same vein. And nah, dude, it's like, I don't know. Just because the movie is called the nun doesn't need like the nun doesn't need to be in it. It's like Jaws. Like the shark is barely in the movie. Um, But still... When the nun was in the fucking movie, like it was the stupidest shit ever. And I was very disappointed and super sad and just angry. You Still know, angry it, about it. Less is are you more. gonna go see their <laughs> Go ahead. Though no, I was just gonna say, are you gonna go see the the what that Lila Lorona? Lila Rona? No, Whatever I don't that care about La Llorona. shit is in that damn <laughs> same universe, isn't it? I don't or think is so. It's a different thing. Oh. You know no. what they like say? Really Le- hacking it hard. They say less is more until you go watch Prometheus and it doesn't have the alien. And then in Alien Covenant, they had to have the alien. It has to have an alien at the end of it. It doesn't have the alien, Jess, so I don't Prometheus care. Prometheus is That's- so much better than Covenant. <laughs> yeah, but Prometheus I is still agree. a piece of shit. No, Prometheus is fantastic. You go to hell and you die. You're a liar, and you're just saying that to be a contrarian turd. Fuck you. No, I actually. <laughs> no, I really like, like Prometheus. Prometheus. Well, you know what? You two. But. 
I fully you want two are high as fuck right Pace, now. So I wish. <laughs> Numira Pace is uh, my future wife, so don't talk shit about her. Okay. What are you, Tommy Wiseau? Now you are my future wife. <laughs> There's only one other person I've ever heard okay, use that Borat. phrase. <laughs> what? Borat. My wife. My wife. My but wife. But your future wife. That's my what Tommy wife. Wiseau says. He doesn't say you are my fiance. He says you are my future wife. Um, I have never seen the room. I don't know. It's been a long time since I've seen it. So it's a bad movie, but it's uh, but it's supposed. It would have been a fungus award, is what it would have been. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. Uh, Anyways, Chris, your least favorite movie of the year. If it's not the nun, you're wrong. Uh, no, it's Holmes and Watson because that movie is a piece of shit. Oh, I never oh. saw it. Oof. Why did you see that? It, it, it's a long story, uh, and it was not by choice. I uh, have a family member who's disabled, and they gotcha. wanted to go see a movie, and that's what they wanted to go see because they watched trailers on their iPad. And so my dad and I and my uncle went and saw it, and my uncle, who was the one who wanted to go see it, after we got out of the movie, he looks at me and goes, that was a piece of shit. And I said, yeah, tried to tell you. But uh, <laughs> it, it is it is unbelievably unfunny in a way that I didn't think was possible when you have Will Ferrell and John C. Riley in a movie. Albeit, I don't like Will Ferrell very much anymore. He's Me kind of been, he's kind of been doing the same thing for the last ten years since Anchorman came out. Or I guess fifteen years now. Um, he like, peaked in uh, his uh, appearance in Eastbound and Down. He peaked with Anchorman. <laughs> he peaked in uh, that uh, fucking uh, college movie. Oh, They're old school. Together. Old school, yeah. When he's like in it just a little bit. Frank the Tank. <laughs> yep. Snoop, Snoop, a loop. Let's go with your green hat. Yeah, old school's <laughs> great. Anchorman has its moments, um, mm-hmm. and pretty much everything. everything Will Ferrell, else is terrible. Well, everything. It, it, Will Ferrell to me is like James Franco. He can't get past the fact that he plays himself. Yeah, all the time without fail. Yeah, and it comes off as lazy. The problem is, is he roped John C. Riley into it, and John C. Riley is an amazing <laughs> actor. He's a good Fantastic actor. Actor, and like he's a good comedic actor. He's a good dramatic actor. And he roped him into this movie, and this movie is awful. There's like one or two gags that are actually kind of funny. One of them is one of them is so insanely stupid. I laughed out loud. Um, and I'll just tell you what it is because you're not going to see the movie. And if you do, uh, the gag is in the last five minutes of the movie. So please don't go see it. Um, <laughs> the whole plot of the film, sir, um, uh, kind of revolves around Holmes and Watson trying to stop the queen from being assassinated. And at the end of the film, it turns out that she's going to be assassinated on a famous boat. That boat ends up being the Titanic. So Holmes and Watson, (sighs) Holmes and Watson save her. And as they're getting off the Titanic with the, the female leads of the film, and I kid you not, this actually happened in the movie and I have to give them credit. You two probably know where I'm going with this. They see a certain actor getting on the boat on one of the other ramps onto the boat. And they both say, hey, look, it's Billy fucking Zane getting onto the boat in the costume he wore in Titanic. I wow. kid you. I kid wow. you not. But they don't say his the character from the movie. Himself. Yeah, they don't say his character's name. They say, hey, look, it's Billy Zane. And it's like, what? Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, the Phantom. I'm sorry. I called him the Phantom. Yeah. No, they go, hey, look, it's Billy Zane. And I was like, what? Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> But it's like that's fantastic, right? That is a hilarious <laughs> gag. But the rest of the movie is really bad. And if you watch the trailer, you already knew that. Don't go see it. It's not funny. It's a waste of everybody's time. The movie and the craziest thing about the movie is, and this is something I talked about with Eric. If you're going to make a parody, because ultimately it is a parody of the Guy Ritchie Sherlock Holmes films, it, it has to be two things. It either has to be timeless or timely. <laughs> Wow. Sorry. I'm going to remix that that shit. Um, Really? It either has to be timely or timeless, and the Guy Ritchie Sherlock Holmes movies aren't timeless, and a movie parroting them coming out 10 years after they came out is not timely. Why did you make this movie? Does anybody even care about the Guy Ritchie Sherlock Holmes? Like, Mm -hmm. the Sherlock craze has gone way down. Yeah. (laughs) And uh, the fact that the movie was mired in development hell for a decade with Sasha Baron Cohen as the lead and Will Ferrell as Watson uh, originally, that movie still would have been a far better movie. It probably still would have sucked though. 
Um, but f- probably still far better. Though. Yeah. <laughs> it maybe would have failed uh, in the positive, so bad it's good direction, as opposed to failing in the 2% or 9% on Rotten Tomatoes direction. Yeah. So, yeah, Holmes and Watson is the absolute worst movie, least favorite film I saw in 2018. It came out like the last week of 2018, too. So it, it, it slid it, it slid into the DMs right at the end. It was Did like, it come out on Christmas? Uh, I think like a couple of days before, maybe, or on Christmas, yeah. Uh, it was real bad, really astoundingly bad. So, well, let's uh, let's let's wrap this up with our favorite film of 2018. What do you have in store for us with your pick, Jess? All right. Well, I think everybody's gonna already know this, but uh, my favorite movie of 2018 was Suspiria. Nice. Yep. I uh, I st- I'm still thinking about that movie. I can't wait for it to come out. It comes out on Blu-ray on the 29th of this month, day before my birthday. So I pre-ordered it. Happy birthday to me. Nice. Um, and yes, thank you guys for this awesome Mondo poster I'm staring at right now. Mm. But this, yeah, no, no, that I thought it was beautiful. I still am very bewitched by it, and I can't wait to see it again on Blu-ray and devour special features and commentaries. And I hope there's a Tilda Swinton commentary here. <laughs> Bewitched, yeah. no pun intended, huh? No pun intended. God, I hope there's commentaries on it. There's been a lot of movies uh, coming out recently that don't have commentaries, and people are up in arms. <sighs> Lame. So. But yeah, Suspiria, it's, it's I don't know. I, got, I, I loved it. I think that it's something that I'm going to be, it's definitely going to be up there for me for a while. It's definitely a movie that uh, is very bewitching. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've listened to the soundtrack a bunch of times yes. since I've seen it. Uh, Me too. It's very, very cool. Especially that music that's like the main sort of theme that happens like during the dance segments. Yeah. Oh, God, that that music just puts me in this crazy, I don't know, weird state or whatever. I really like it. Mm-hmm. All right, Chris. I know you totally agree with no, me. No, no, no. I don't on. think I don't think that I don't I don't think that that's Eric's uh, pick. But I mean, I I mean, I don't I understand why y'all like it. So yeah, no, no, it's a. I'm not gonna shit talk the movie. We already had a two hour podcast about it. So if you want to know <laughs> if you want to know my thoughts, just go check that podcast out because we're we're not uh, we're not retreading that ground again. <laughs> two hour podcast, yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's easy to talk about that movie for two hours, whether or not you like it. It's there's uh, a lot going on in that movie. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot going on. A lot of Tilda going on, really. There's a whole lot of Tilda going on. <laughs> uh, oh, is it my turn? Yeah, yes, you got to pick turn. one or just go oh. with the movie that we know you're going to go with. Um, the best movie of 2018. No, 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 no. Your favorite. favorite movie. No, it is the best no. movie. And <laughs> and happens to also be my personal favorite. Unequivocally. Uh, don't at me. If you do, you're wrong. It's Mandy. Uh, God damn it, dude. It's the most metal fucking movie I've ever seen in my goddamn life. Everything about it, it is completely style over substance. Uh, yes, absolutely. Which, which I am 100% on board with in this movie. Like... The way that this movie was shot, the whole first hour of this movie being like so moody and so slow and so deliberate and it, it like, God, the fucking music. Uh, I mean, it's Johan Johansson's last score, which like makes it that much more I, I, sad, beautiful. Hey, Eric, I, are you it, putting on your rubber gloves on your end? No, no. <laughs> Who's touching their microphone? I thought that was I you. I am not. Nah, it ain't me. Nope. <laughs> it ain't me. Matt. Hey, calm down. <laughs> um, Go ahead. Yeah, I don't know. I was uh, just, uh, where was I? Sucking Johan Johansson's dick for a second there? Mm-hmm. what it sounds yeah. like. Yeah. yeah, so anyways, yeah, the music, uh, it's honestly one of the most beautiful scores I've ever heard, and it fits the movie so perfectly. It's literally insane. Um, and it's from maybe my one of my personal favorite like modern uh, like film composers who has worked with Denis Villeneuve, who we you know constantly fillet his movies whenever they come out because <laughs> you know they're amazing and uh, 
his scores uh, are a big part of that um, for uh, a few of his movies. And so uh, for him to sort of like lend his mm, sort of like musical stylings, but in a very different way to uh, this movie was one of those things that I would never expect it coming from him, but it makes a lot of sense at the same time. Uh, and I'm sad that this is the last movie that we're going to be able to like hear him score. Um, Panos Cosmatos, like I was looking forward to this movie uh, ever since I saw Beyond the Black Rainbow a couple years ago. That was one of those movies that like is also completely style over substance, uh, even more so because the mm-hmm. story is even. Is there a story? <laughs> uh, there is, but it's like so abstract and so weird. Like, like Barbarian Sound Sound Studio too. Like that kind was- of. Yeah, where it's like you have oh. to watch it like five times in order to like figure out what the fuck is even happening. Right. Because cause it's buried so deeply in the dialogue and so deeply in like the set design and the, um, you know, just like the world or whatever that it's there's no way you're going to understand it the first time you watch it. And I was completely entranced by that movie the first time I saw it. And so Mandy sort of brought that feeling full circle for me because it had been like so many years since I had first seen uh, Beyond the Black Rainbow. And it had been nine years since that movie came out um, when uh, Mandy finally dropped. And I watched Mandy um, and I was so glad that I got to go see it in a theater a couple of times uh, because that movie is worth going to see on the biggest screen with the loudest goddamn sound system you can possibly get because it's in insane uh it's nicholas cage at his most nicholas cage um i I don't even know what else to say about it other than (laughs) it's it's, it's insanity man and it's uh, it's badass it's so badass it's so insane the movie shifts gears so fucking hard about an hour in that it will literally like freak you the fuck out if you're not ready for it uh it goes you know fully gnarly and has you know some of the best cinematography and uh, just like the way that it's so stylized is like so perfect for me it was like this movie was made specifically for me it's slow and then it just fucking kicks you in the teeth it's metal as fuck and uh yeah go fucking see it right now don shutter Don Shutter. <laughs> God, turn it like if you don't have like a like a stereo system hooked up to your TV, like hook one up to your TV and then fucking blast it as loud as you can blast it. And it still like makes sense because Jesus Christ, it's so fucking awesome. Back to you, Chris. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I didn't I, I, I don't think that we should take it upon ourselves to shit on each other's <laughs> picks or best <laughs> I liked Mandy. I didn't love it. And I don't want to say it's courtesy of overhyped by Eric. Um, Sounds like. But it also might be because I did. (laughs) When I saw it, I was like, you need to watch this movie. And then you were like, oh, okay, I'll watch it. And then you didn't watch it for four months. Sorry. Four months. Yeah. So it was <laughs> I was about to say me oh. sucking this movie's dick for four months because I watched it and then I watched it again. And then a month later I went and I watched it again. And then like I watched it at my house like ten <laughs> times or some shit. And like I kept telling you how awesome it was. And I was like, dude, it keeps getting more awesome every time I watch it. It's amazing. And then you watched it and you were like, I mean, it's okay. I, I, I'll, I'll say the same thing I said to you off podcast. I wish there was more of the shit with Nicolas Cage just going ballistic and less of the uh, uh, pseudo heady nonsense at the beginning of the movie. And, I, a, and you and I, that's a fair criticism. You and I it's both not... know that I have no problem with pseudo heady nonsense because the movie that I picked for my favorite film is full of it. And that film happens to be Venom. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta go. I <laughs> Later, guys. <laughs> No, uh, my favorite film of the year, without a doubt, is Annihilation. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. So much so that I dropped $200 on a poster for it. Uh, So much so that I uh, dropped $80 on the other poster for it. So much so that I've read all three of the books now. So much so that it is one of those movies where when I think about it, I want to watch it again. 
which in my mind, yeah. that's a pretty good sign of a movie you really like if you're like, you know, and rather than talk about it or think about it, let's just watch it because it is, it has, and look, I'm no fan of Natalie Portman. I'll be perfectly honest with you. I don't like her very much. She, she's pretty bland. Ooh, I she, love her. She's uh, okay. She just always the, seems disinterested. Black Swan, dude. Black Swan and Black now Swan's Annihilation. Fantastic. Those two movies, like, I am forever a Natalie Portman fanboy I, because, Black Swan just is, because of those two movies. I don't like Black Swan. Oh. It's just it's just okay. Black, it's just okay. Black Swan made me fucking cry in the goddamn theater. Okay. Well, we can't help that you're a bitch. <laughs> the soundtrack to that movie is amazing, and the story is so beautiful, and it's so weird. Oh, but Annihilation is one of those movies that's it's like like Mandy, like Suspiria, which, by the way, our three movies we picked are not for everybody. Frankly, no, frankly, they're, they're not for most for people. Most. Yeah. Look, and they're not and, even for all of us. And the three and the three of them yeah. are like not box office successes they're very polarizing i and long yeah well mandy mine's not so the longest yeah <laughs> mandy's two hours <laughs> yes I, mine's probably the longest <laughs> first time you said that one huh um uh-huh. but, <laughs> but it's it, the first time that she's probably right <laughs> that's you know <laughs> yeah oh, we're right <laughs> Uh, Just um, average by Eric. <laughs> uh, Overhyped medium. by Eric. Incredibly middle sized. Yeah. <laughs> Extremely medium penis. Showed Chode by Eric. <laughs> um, but yeah, okay. it's it's okay, one of those it's one of those movies where like Suspiria, like Mandy, it's not for everybody and it's not even for most people. And I think that's what Uh-oh. I like about it, if that makes sense. I would agree. Yeah. I would absolutely agree. I think that's what I mean that's that's there we, we, I mean, given the movies that we've talked about tonight and the myriad of movies that we did not see that came out in 2018 into regular theaters, the general just gist of movies this past year was pretty lackluster. Mm-hmm. So the ones that like really like did something or tried to do something just to bring some kind of fresh, like like I, I picked a remake for my favorite film but it's barely a remake it's a you know? remake like, in it's, name alone it's more like a reimagining yeah. and, I, like and, exactly. and similarly annihilation is an adaptation of a book but so so barely vaguely yeah, so it's, barely it's, it's practically just the title and like the main idea of a group of women go into an area that is bizarre it's right. uh it's a reimagining kind of like the shining is a reimagining of the book the shining right. like in the sense that the feeling is there, but the exact sort of events are not the same. Yeah, exactly. And and uh, there's something the, to be said for that. And Alex Garland said that himself. He said uh, when I went out, uh, when he decided to write the script for it, he did not reread the book. He literally just took his thoughts and his memories of reading the books and his feelings and how he remembered experiencing it. Mm-hmm. And then he wrote that as the movie. And look, some and, of my favorite movies are body horror movies. So Annihilation works right in there. Like we talked oh, yeah. about already. I think the three of us are on the same page. Videodrome is one of my favorite movies. Um, yep. I'm assuming both of y'all. I mean, I know Eric loves it. And Jess, if you have a poster of it in your house. It's absolutely one of my favorite movies. Yeah, it's my favorite. It's my favorite Cronenberg. Cronenberg. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I, I would say it's mine, but I love The Fly so the much. The Fly is my second. Yeah, it's. Bet- I think between the two, I can never pick one because... Because they're just both so fucking good. And I love body horror. So Annihilation, The Fly, Videodrome, they all live in that same universe. And yeah. that's why I love Annihilation is because it's body horror with like weird sci-fi or strange sci-fi. And I and Alex yeah, Garland, I didn't like Ex Machina. I didn't. I honestly didn't understand why everyone was like rocketing out of their seats with explosive diarrhea with how great it was. It was just uh, okay. I honestly haven't seen it. <laughs> Still, yeah, and like you know, it. and I you like know what? Quite a lot. And you know what? I, I, I wouldn't rush out and see it. It's okay, but it's it's it's, it's visually sitting it's, there forever to watch. It's visually it's stunning. <laughs> it's uh, it's it's definitely like um, one of those contained sci-fi movies that like people love. You know, where it's like, oh, it's just high concept and like you know, real simple sci-fi. You know, not like um. Blade Runner 2049 or some shit where it's like Far crazy, reach. like super, super insane, almost three hour, like futuristic it's sci-fi epic. insanity. Like this is like, you know, 
takes place in pretty much one location. Uh, it's a and, bottle episode movie. Yeah, it, it really is. And it, I really like it quite a lot. But, uh, you know, that kind of shit is it's hit and miss with people. You know, if the message of the movie or the performances of the movie and that, you know, style of movie, like don't hit you in just the right way then you're not going to be into it because it's so simple and it's so basic that there's such few things to grab onto, um, and, which is good and bad, and annihilation, depending on your movie. And Annihilation is the same way. The message in Annihilation resonated with me a lot. And there is a message in Annihilation. I'm not going to ruin the movie if you haven't seen it. You should go see it. But I think the message is there. Um, oh yeah, but it doesn't beat you over the no. It's you know it's it it, it's about self destruction and and you know finding oneself and and coming right. to terms with your destructive your personal destructive nature um, because and but again that's what makes the character so interesting and and and, it, and that that works with Natalie Portman's character in the movie because her character is kind of devoid of emotion in the movie because she is self destruction personified right. in a character and. That's what I loved about the movie. I don't want to gush on and on about it because we already did, but the movie came out. It was dumped on fucking Netflix uh, internationally a week after it came out in the States. It was gone in out of theaters like a week after it came out. Uh, Eric and I had the opportunity to both see it in theaters. I loved it. It's great. My favorite movie of the year. And you know what? I know a lot of people that don't like it and, you know. Cool. That if, you're probably um, not. You're probably not gonna like it. Just like a lot of people aren't gonna like Mandy or Suspiria. Right. And I, I remember when that movie came out and we talked about it. I said, um, this movie's probably gonna be my favorite movie of the year. And honestly, if Mandy hadn't come out, it would have been my favorite movie of the year. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, and and I do want to give a, a shout out to a movie I I almost gave to Over Annihilation, The House That Jack Built. Because oh, that, Lars von Trier. Eh? That movie is fucking bananas. Did you see the the uh, illegal unrated cut? Oh, that they uh, had out. I don't think we all did. The hot minute. Yeah, no, they did like some like screening, some series of screenings around the like country, and actually the small theater that we have over here got it. Our little independent cinema. But uh, they uh, evidently, like the next day, they were like, "Yeah, so you guys like showed an unrated version of this that wasn't necessarily approved by the MPAA. So now, this so like Lars von Trier was getting in all the trouble." I think I think it was a but, stunt, really. Absolutely. Uh, and I think the I've MPAA heard, I've heard can from go from a couple fuck of people, themselves and their stupid assholes. I, I've honest. heard from a couple of people who saw that version of the movie and then saw like the regular rated R one, and they're like. I couldn't even tell you what was different. Um, oh, okay. Well, isn't I mean to be honest, that happens a lot in yeah. like unrated versions where it's just like, oh, you added like fourteen seconds of something in that wait, I they didn't said, even notice. They said cunt a bunch of times. Unrated. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Or, pussy, pussy, you know, pussy, like, pussy, pussy, pussy. Unrated, guys. Oh my god, the world is coming to an end. But yeah. Um, yeah. No, I, I mean, if we're doing honorable mentions, uh, fucking dude, Into the Spider Verse. That movie, it gave me all the feels. I'm a huge Spider Man nerd, and I love Spider Man. And mm, that movie really, honestly, is the best fucking Spider Man movie. It's better than Spider Man 2, which is hard for me to say. How dare you disrespect the Holy Trilogy? Because. <laughs> <laughs> Spider-Man 2 is the most Sam Raimi movie that's not an Evil Dead movie and not Drag Me to Hell that there is. Isn't so. Spider-Man 3 the most Sam Raimi movie he's ever made? No, Spider-Man 2 is way more Sam Raimi than Spider-Man Yeah, 3. I would have to agree. But Spider-Man 3 has Spider-Man dancing. <laughs> Finger guns, man. I'm going to leave it at that. Everybody shits on that movie, but it was still the highest grossing movie of 2007. Let's that movie's not, not bad. It's just stupid. Oh, no. It's also bad. Eh. <laughs> I doesn't mean I don't like it. It's fun. Um, Topher Grace is Venom. I mean, come on. Who th- that is perfect casting. <laughs> <laughs> no? Am I All right, before this devolves into total trolling, I think there's two topics that we need to hit on before we're done. Uh anybody else have any honorable mentions movies that they fucking really liked that they want to talk about before we Nah, and my honorable mentions would be like hereditary probably we've already done that. So Ooh, yeah, can I can I throw in one that I think was uh, overhyped and ooh. I thought was just okay, real quick? Because I'm looking at it, a quiet <laughs> sure. place. <laughs> oh my god, oh, we a didn't even mention was, a quiet place. Yeah, because it doesn't worth so mentioning quiet. anything. But it's no. not like it's not a bad movie. Best but it's also use of like, no fine. sound. A quiet place. You know what though? The sound design in that movie is actually it's good. 
It's cool. It's sure. it's used to effect. But you know who also did uh, sound design like that before A Quiet Place? Uh, our boy Mike Flanagan in a yeah. little yeah. movie on Netflix called Hush. I know. Um, yep. Don't don't was, tell don't cool. don't bring up movies that aren't mainstream films that people can latch onto with people from TV shows that they recognize. Oh, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I've only been repping our boy Mike Flanagan since uh, his first um, short film called Oculus Chapter Three: The Man with yeah. the Plan. Oculus uh, Rift? No. Isn't Oculus? Didn't they? They made Oculus into a full length feature, right? Into a mm-hmm. feature, yeah. I produced, actually think that produced short, by none other than WWE. <laughs> I think that the short is actually much more terrifying than the feature, but the feature takes a lot of the same ideas from the short and really like fleshes them out to like you know a full two hour deal or whatever. Sure. And it's still cool. I really like it. Anyways, uh, another honorable uh, mention. Sorry to bother you. That movie's oh, amazing. That's but what again, I was say. another yeah. movie not for everybody. Frankly, a movie not for most people or any and I, I think that's another runner-up for like the you know the jordan peele award the get out award you know the breakout movie it's boots riley's first fucking movie and it's insane and it's insanely good and, and it's body horror and it goddamn has Ooh. the craziest twist in any movie oh, i have man. seen all year oh wait, jess do you know what the twist of the movie is? i haven't seen it oh, oh my god no, just don't say <laughs> anything about say, it it's so sad that we can't say what it is because it uh, is so fucking I, insane i promise to watch it before we uh get together again. <laughs> just you, you gotta oh, watch that. it that all twist right. Will fucking lose. You'll lose your shit. You'll be like, "Wait, excuse me." The movie. The movie. Let's just say the movie takes a hard left turn about halfway through, and that hard right. left turn, it just it doesn't go back. It stays. It doesn't go back to center. It you stays going it. that direction. Yeah, the uh, Mandy hard left turn an hour in has literally nothing on that movie. All yeah. right. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, uh, also, this is a movie that came out in 2018 that I just recently watched um, that, God damn it, manipulated the shit out of my emotions like a motherfucker. A Star is Born? S- searching. Searching? Yeah. Oh, that, the like, John uh, Cho movie? John Cho movie like uh, that's told all through phone and uh, computer screens. Oh. Uh, like, oh, oh that one. Interesting. Like that. Un- uh, unscary, unfriended? Yeah. Yeah. Unscary, but unfriended? I... God damn it, dude. That movie fucked up. I'll it was tell very you, sad. I'll tell you a, a superlative that I thought about doing, but it was really for one movie in specific. The one movie in 2018 that everyone kept talking about that I could have given two shits about, Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Take oh. your Brian Singer child raping ass and get them out of here. Didn't, How's about uh, that? Didn't it just win something at the Golden Globes? It just Globes? won the best, it's, it's best not, film at Golden Globes. Golden Globes. I it's think. not hard to win an award when you're telling a story about someone's life. That's true. Low hanging fruit. They have bi- biopics. Yeah, biopics are low hanging fruit, and if you don't like that, that's the case. It totally is. How many times do actors win for portraying real mm. people over people who are creating an actual performance? Cough, cough. Michael Keaton losing to Eddie. I've got a problem with my mouth. Red man in every movie that I'm in. <laughs> Ugh. Stephen Hawking was a real person. It's not hard to do a performance of them when you could just go watch a video of who the fuck they were. But people right. are like, oh, they lose themselves to the role, to the oh, character. Oh, and, and by the way, to be she- honest, though, Michael Keaton was actually kind of just playing a characterized version of himself. And Jim Carrey was playing, and Jim Carrey was possessed by the spirit of Andy Kaufman, and he looks like a real pretentious prick in that documentary. And that's what happens when character acting and losing yourself becomes a problem. Yep. Wow. Yeah. And by the way, Randy Malik's teeth in that movie are ridiculous. Did you just call him Randy Malik? <laughs> I said Rammy. What's his name? Romy? Rammy? Randy, Randy Malik. Should I have called Randy him? Malik. You know what I should have called him? Walter Matthau from Dennis the Menace. <laughs> <laughs> and if you get that reference, good on you. Uh, all <laughs> right. Big, um, big old Malik. chicklets. <laughs> I think before we completely lose our minds uh, making fun of Randy Malik, uh, I thought it was pronounced there... R- Rony Malik. It's Rami. <laughs> Rami. Uh, Rami. Uh, huh? I, it's Rami Randy from Rami. now on. It's Ram- for, Ram- for Ram- Randy. 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, Mr. Robot, aka Randy Malik. <laughs> Randy Malik. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyways, are there any movies like one or two uh, movies that you guys are excited about that are coming out this year? Like, obviously, there's big, you know, gigantic movies that are coming out, but like, 
what else are you guys stoked for? Hmm. You know, I I honestly don't know. I haven't heard a lot about like you have. You probably just can't smaller, think about it. Yeah. Anymore, right. Happy Death Day to you looks awesome. Well, yes, that does look good. That looks fun. I was trying to think of smaller ones, but uh, Hellboy, obviously. <sighs> <laughs> right. <Okay. laughs> no, you mean instead of well, a Dumbo, Ron Perlman sure. third film, they're giving us a looks like Dime Store Hellboy instead? What about Detective Pikachu? I mean, that looks amazing. I'm kind of, I'm kind I mean, of pumped for Detective Pikachu. I have no Ooh, I'm desire. excited for Godzilla. Oh. Dude, King of the Monsters. King yeah. of Who Gives a Shit. I'm Giant stoked. Giant monsters. <sighs> Giant monster movie. I dude. can't wait for them to when, focus on uh, Millie Bobby Brown for an hour and a half of the movie like they did with the last one. <laughs> when Kong Skull Island came out, I was like, whatever, dude. It's a King Kong movie. And then it was the best fucking movie. Because it was directed by someone who had a distinct vision for the film. Godzilla, King of the Monsters, just looks like the last Godzilla movie all over again. I don't know. It looks tight. But with it more monsters. Better <laughs> than the there were three in the last movie. <laughs> but there's going to be what in this uh, one? Yeah, but ooh, now there's going to be like five. Hashtag prove me wrong. Okay. Isn't uh, Quentin Tarantino's movie coming out this year? Jesus Christ. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood about Manson. Oh, my God. Is it? Yeah. Yep, I believe it is. Out. Yeah. Oh, well. I I'm stoked for that. I'm unabashedly a Quentin Tarantino fan, and I will get shit for that forever. And I don't give a shit. I I'm more I'm excited. A Quentin, I'm a Tarantino Tarantino fan. So <laughs> I'm a Totino's fan. Does that count? I'm a Totino's <laughs> pizza boy. I, I love. <laughs> I am a Totino's pizza boy. Totino's Totino's. How did you know? Totino's Totino's. Everybody's talking about Totino's Totino's oh. pizza rolls. <laughs> They're not I'm Doritos or burritos. Pizza They're Totino's boy. pizza rolls. With the rolls oh, in that. Wow. <laughs> <They God both. laughs> and if you don't know what that's from, your life is not worth living at the moment. No. <laughs> Tim and oh. Eric. Awesome show. Great job. Um, speaking of Tim Heidecker, uh, Us looks awesome, and he's in that. Us mm, does look amazing. That's and, true. Uh, that, I want that uh, rendition of I Got Five on it uh, to listen to all the time because and I want it's that, terrifying. And I want that movie to be good. I don't want it to be a sophomore slump for Jordan Peele. It doesn't look like a sophomore I slump. I know, re- I know. It really I, looks like he's leaning so hard into the what the fuck aspect of filmmaking. Yeah, and I'm really and I'm on board excited for that for, for sure. Yeah. I'm excited for his Twilight Zone that series seems cool that he's going to be doing. Um, I'm excited for Aladdin. No. And Dark, Dark Phoenix. <laughs> and Dumbo. I'm excited for a little movie that's coming out um, called The uh, Standoff at Sparrow Creek. Hmm. Uh, it comes out like that. in a week or two weeks, week and a half from now. It comes out pretty soon. Um, it's produced by the same people who did like Bone Tomahawk and Ooh, uh, Brawl and Sublock 99. Yeah. Not the same director, but the uh, same like producing company or whatever. And. Um, uh, a guy that I know edited the movie and it looks fucking awesome. Really That's like awesome. tense one location, like thriller type of thing with a, uh, oh, with, mass with shooting. a, yeah, with a theme that's very, um, timely. Yeah. I'm excited so. for angry birds to the movie. <laughs> With that, I can't believe how many sequels. I can't believe how many sequels are coming out next year to shit that I didn't even think deserved a sequel. Yeah, just, like, that's uh, just every year, man. Like every year. I know, year, but I'm I know, just, but uh, I know, but like next year seems particularly bad. Like 2020 or 20. You mean this year that we're in? Oh right yeah, right. I keep forgetting <laughs> we're already living the nightmare. We um, have been talking about 2018 for the last four hours. So it's true. 20, and, 20, 2019 <laughs> and we're we're soon. I mean, it's already January. Soon it'll be March, and then we'll be looking back at January of 2020 and being like, "Where did all the time go?" So, and we'll be like, "Man, wasn't Shazam a great movie?" Hopefully, <laughs> biggest surprise of the year. Color me surprised. I really Where? liked Detective Pikachu. It was wasn't good. that a crazy twist at the end of Rocket Man, where it turned out that Elton John was dead the whole time. What? <laughs> Rocket Man, the movie about Elton John. Oh, I was thinking about the Rocketeer. I was like, God damn it! If they're remaking that movie, I will murder someone. No, they're uh, <laughs> making a sequel to it with a female African American protagonist. I'm good with that. As long as she fights Nazis, sounds like, like that's some all that really sounds matters. like some forced diversity to me. Come on, just 
But it doesn't. You don't have to act like that's Do exciting. The as yeah. long as it's Tessa Thompson, I'm good with <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Or Lapita Nyong'o. I'm also good with that, too. Just We need a Maz Kanata standalone film. <laughs> <laughs> no? Oh, dude. Episode 9 comes out at the end of this year. Oh. Uh, and nobody is excited about it. We're all just worried. Just quietly <laughs> just, worried. Just, just waiting. Just I mean, God. did you see The Last Jedi? Because like none of us know what to think anymore. Because we're like, okay... Is how much of the last Jedi is he going to retcon? How is much he gonna is retcon? <laughs> any how of much it? of this like, is course correct? How much of this is a course correct? No, seriously. Like, no, yeah, no, much, you're right. You're right. You're 100 percent right. Like, is he going to fuck with it at all, or like, is he just going to kind of go with it and like be like, okay, all right, so here's the sequel to that movie, I guess. Um, or is he going to like kind of steer it back towards the direction that maybe he thought it was going to go from the very beginning? Also, how are they going to deal with Carrie Fisher? Because she's been dead for fucking two years now. Yep. Well, I mean, they put Peter Cushing and Oh, boy. And look how that And he was out. dead for a lot longer than two years. Yeah. And, that's... It, was, <laughs> and it was really bad. It was yeah. really unsettling. Yeah. Oh, my God. Look there at his like, face. It looks like a mask. Any valley problems. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there was one scene where I was like, wow, that's cool. And then when he turns around. When he was around, in the shadows, yeah. When he's like in the shadow and you only see it in uh, like the reflection of the mm-hmm. window or whatever. I was like, oh, my God, that looks amazing. And then he turns around and I was like, turn oh, that's terrifying. <laughs> that's terrifying. Turn around. Oh, jeez. Turn around, turn around. And don't forget, Peter, we, get a, sorry. we get another X-Men movie next year. This year. Uh, this year. Isn't New Mutants supposed to come out this year? Because it was supposed to come out this time last year? I How think so. X-Men, X-Men properties are we getting this year? I think like, we're getting... Just the, Runaways and... This is the end of X-Men as we know it, because Disney owns it now and is like, you know, yeah. we're done, Fox. We're taking this over and not making any more goddamn turd-ass X-Men movies. I don't know. I liked uh, Days of Future Past. That movie was okay the first time I saw it, and it is diminishing returns every time after. First Class is cool. It's because it's got Kevin Bacon in it. Kevin Bacon makes everything better. (laughs) He's just like the food bacon. (laughs) (laughs) And we get the next uh, It, It Chapter 2 as well. Yes, that I am looking forward to. That'll be interesting. I think that how much I like the second chapter is really going to affect how much I like the first chapter, if that makes any sense. No, I think that absolutely. If it's a a turd, I'm going to hate everything. But if it's good, I'm going to like the first one more than I like it right now. And and a standalone Joker movie? And a sequel to Zombieland? Oh, my God. Also, don't care. 2019 is shaping up to be the most exciting year for cinema since 2018. Well, I'm going to go back to the movie I was most excited for last year around this time. And that was The Predator. And look how that turned out. So... (laughs) Yep, pretty much. I mean, it's, this year this year there's some stuff that I think is uh, mainstream stuff is going to be pretty interesting. Like we said, the finale of Avengers, we've got episode nine, and then we've got random shit that's like, okay, it could either be really bad or really good, like Sonic the Hedgehog, or... Uh, oh, we're also getting uh, the last season of fucking Game of Thrones this year. That's right, Ooh, which is effectively yeah. going to be six movies. Yeah. Basically. Yeah, six two-hour epics. And you know what? I guarantee I'm you, at the, right with that. at the end of it, everyone's going to be like, "That's it, huh?" Probably. <laughs> I just I, I like we're getting. Um, there's like that nagging feeling in the back of my head that's like, "It's going to suck." You know, it's going to suck. It's not going to do very well. And apparently, the voice in my brain is just Jerry Seinfeld. But it's like <laughs> this is not going to be good, and you know it. Everybody knows it. They're just trying to cover it up by the fact that they're making it really long and over the top. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Could be cool. Um, in the HBO front. True Detective season three next weekend. This weekend, yeah. I mean, Sunday. five days, whatever. It is the next weekend mm. from right now. Wow. So yeah, so uh, those were our picks for uh, for twenty. You guys have anything else you want to talk about? We've been doing this for two and a half hours. No. <laughs> uh, Good lord. I am uh, done with twenty eighteen. I think we have taken it out. Yeah, I think that anything that can be said has been said. Look, we didn't watch yeah. every movie in 2018. It's not expected I didn't that watch we watch half of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not expected that we could. But at the same time, if you listen to this podcast, the movies we talked about that we liked, we didn't like. If you liked or hated them, you know that's what makes uh, that's what makes enjoying movies fun. Is that uh, not everybody's ever going to come to the same conclusion? Um, you know, especially about our three favorite movies. I didn't like uh, two of them. 
So not as much as you guys did enough to. So that's uh, that's what makes watching movies fun, in my in my book. So, but uh, when we're not here doing the podcast, where can people find you, Jess? Well, you can find me on Twitter at writer Jess Byard. Um, and that's basically it. I mean, I'm on Facebook. Probably accept your friend request if you're not overtly creepy. But uh, yeah, that's what I'm doing. What about you, Eric? I am solely on Twitter. You can find me at Tycho Magnex, where I tweet insanely random bullshit that comes into my brain or rant about movies every once in a while, rant about other things. It's, to be honest, it's just me ranting. Yeah. And then either me or Jess responding. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> or, both, just, or both of us or both of us responding. Yeah. I just <laughs> rant and then they're just like, yeah, dude, rant. And then, then I'm We're like, cool. Supportive. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, an enabler. Uh, He's an enabler. Tight, uh, <laughs> really tight knit uh, Twitter community of three. So, yeah. Hey, we're, I, I wouldn't want to be part of a group that would have me as a member. So there you go. The three of us are perfectly fine. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, and uh, when you're not, uh, if you want to hear us, uh, me and Eric Moore and Jess occasionally, culturecast.com is where you can find out more about the culturecast. I am on Twitter at culture stash if you want to follow me on there i post stuff uh, irregularly so that's fun um we're gonna get back into the swing of things in february with some new movies and our monthly themes um until then make sure to check out the culture cast big thanks as always to eric for the intro outro music our patreon links are on the rss feed at culturecast.com Big thanks, as always, to Jess for joining us for a long, very extended year-end wrap-up. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. And uh, we'll catch you on the next Culture Cast. Peace! Peace!